Yeah, okay. It can go wide and I can't hold it in the current there. So we're right into uh, trying to go into the catcher's mitt. Kind of that radio dish looking one again a little bit. It's interesting though how the, the edges kind of curl in rather than it being this this smooth edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that sort of like whips the current back down. I mean, it looks sort of like a, a polyopic. I just haven't seen that one that's immense. Hey Dan, I switched you off of Jed Reckoning. The USBL has been acting fine, so just using right. that for now. It's more trustworthy. Roger. Thank you. fun one to do photogrammetry on. Yeah. yeah can I look back up again? Yeah, when, you're, when you're ready, I'll come back around to the north then. Ready to continue north? Yeah, right. Bridge, this is now another 40 meters north, please. Does fall in the family of the polyopagon pet sponge. Polyopagon. Yeah. Great name. Great pronunci pronunciations. I'm getting there. Polyopagon? Yes. Wow. Phones well, for you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Take a zoom on some of these white fans over here. White fans. Sorry if you circled it. I missed uh, it. Really. Any of these, if there's right, any that's yeah. easier than the other. Yeah, you can push it in there, Jeff. A lot of brittle stars making their home on the branches. Chrysogorges surrounding as well. Push in a bit more for a sec. That's good, thanks. It's like a white coral again. Yeah. Is that what a chrysogorgia is? Primnoids. Primnoid. Chrysogorgia is the sort of more dainty mm. one. Okay. Great, thank you. Wow. That would have been a good uh, view for your TikTok uh, Kotachi. What's that? that? This view kind of might oh, be yeah. good for your TikTok. Oh, look, there's like that sponge that looks a little bit like the one we collected a sample of the other day. Yeah, you're right. But it looks a little bit dead now. That the one that we have in front of us. Yeah. A little sea and enemy over there. Yeah, a few bigger oh, a ones. A couple big ones. Oh, wow. Yeah, black coral. Big black coral. Very nice. Look at that one. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. So twisting. Have you guys ever been to any art exhibitions that are like all about coral? Like, like that would be a really cool yeah. art exhibit to to visit. Just like an underwater coral. Yeah. Yeah. Exhibit. And like. That shape is wild, happens, yeah, you don't see that. But it's curved, which is interesting. Usually they're pretty 
straight up and down. And then this wall here, just covered Ooh. in glass. This bottom. place Whoa. is only sponge. <laughs> wow, oh my look gosh. At that. Let's take a look at this. It kind of. I didn't see a circle in it. Keeps going. Keep sort of rough right. area. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Sitting in there a bit. Remind me of like bats hanging from a cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a tiny little crinoid over there? In like the left area? Hard to tell. Yeah, it looks like it. This one? Yeah. Probably. Watch your left there, Dan. Okay. Thanks. Looks like there's also a few big ones right on top of this as well. Yep. I know, I'm constantly looking back at the two vehicles and their views and how like you can see how much life there is in both cameras and you can kind of like anticipate a little bit about what we're about to see. Yeah. Wow. Boy, that Amazing. was quite an overhang there. Quite an overhang, agreed. So much life. This part should be called Only Fans. <laughs> Only Fans. So we're on Argonaut Seamount. Who can name some of the Argonauts? I don't know what an Argonaut is. <laughs> <laughs> is that the six original ships or something? I remember from Jason, super off. Jason oh. and the Argonauts and the search for the Golden Fleece. Oh, yep. Hercules was one of the Argonauts. Hmm. It's a Alrighty. tale of Greek What's mythology. What's that white fan looking one again? That's a primnoid. Primnoid. Keep forgetting. Primnoid. I dropped my pen. On the next step, Kentucky wow. must do uh, 20 meters. This is quite the land of boulders. Same dirt, same bearing. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'll just bring it down to 20 meter steps. So yeah. yeah boulders and primnoids here. Bridge Very this snap. 20 meters north, please. The fans on the edge of that boulder on the right. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Features like this are why high resolution mapping data is really important because these sort of things would be totally smoothed over in right. course mapping, but if you get high res resolution, you can really sort of pick these things out. Canis, Jason, Hercules, Atalanta. Yep. Uh, some Argonauts? Yeah. Yep. Atalanta was an Argonaut? That's what the comments are saying. It could be. I, I don't know. I have to look it up. Mm -hmm. But our viewers probably know better. They can look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Our viewers have the access to the internet, which knows yes. everything. Yeah. Are we able to come in tight on one of these big fans? Sure. Some whip bamboos showing up here too on this rock. But hmm. Prim Noid. Yeah. So shiny these rocks. Look at that. Yeah, that's current swept. Sure is, yeah. Very smooth. It's reflecting the light. Mm hmm. Okay, Jeff. Push in there. You can see those black cars in the background, too. This is a primnoid, right? Yeah. Yes. 
And then you can tell because their polyps face down. Well, different from what I understand, different uh, groups of primnoid polyps are oriented different ways. So mm. Norella has polyps that face uh, down, whereas Calyptrophora has polyps that face up. Tiny little brittle stars there. So there's a lot of really interesting little characters about these corals that you have to right. learn to identify them. It's really interesting science. These are brittle That's stars? Zoom. Thank you. Yep, brittle stars on the branches. Rich, this is Nev. Oh, All facing um, the same direction. Hold, hold on for a second. Mm -hmm. All right, hold off for a second. Sorry about that, George. It's quite telling of the current, the usual current here, yeah? Definitely. The fan would orient itself to get as much food oh. from the passing current. Fighting that current here to come back up to the north, so it's going to be a little slower. This is pretty good, too. Yeah. That's pinned. A lot of really large bathy <laughs> pathies here. <laughs> bathy pathies. Smaller ones Full that are power. more like the one on the left. There are a lot of these. Uh, we're still dives. pretty light, so I'm using quite a bit to hold it down as well. Wow. I'm loving this field of primnoids. Yeah. I don't think we've seen them quite at this density on any of the other dives. No. Especially Very the, close together, too. Yeah dense and they're all huge. Interesting structural formations here. Can't mm -hmm. quite figure out the geology. Okay, Katachi, I'm in a happier spot now, thanks. Roger. Bridge, this is Nev. 20 meters north, please. Could be that this seamount is not in, in the, the tied to the other, the formation of the other seamounts. It could be an older remnant. Mm. Oh, really? Um, not sure. This is a cool twirl. Everywhere you look, there's coral growing as far as the eye can see and the light can reach. <laughs> hey, Dan, how far do you think the faintest hill is? Yeah. I guess we've sort of reached the summit of this plateau, I, I think. I don't yeah, see much in uh, Herc sonar anymore. Yeah, I'll just spin back around here. And yep. Get a beat on one. Gonna have to uh, jump off the cliff here. Yeah, so it'll probably flatten out here between here and waypoint two, but we can still look around the crest of uh, There's this ridge. Uh, a few targets there, 20 meters out. Yep. Uh. Oh yeah, I can see it in the distance. Yeah, this these are features of relief that we're not resolving in our multi-beam sonar to the, to the extent that might be possible. 
What is the uh, resolution of the multi-beam? Is that a big That's boulder that we're about to go into? Uh, Look at that. It just It's like a oh skyscraper. So typically 25 sort of, meters. Sort of varies with depth, yeah. At this yeah. depth, it might be, yeah, I'd say that's about right, 25 meters. Each Look one of the that. pixels you see there is Look when he zooms in, so 25 meters square. Cool. Whoa, that's crazy. Wow, very, very cool. Looks like it split in half and carved open. The sponge yeah. is amazing when it's stock. Yeah, let's look at the sponge. This is really cool. See if I can get over there. It's just zipping here on the top of the hill. Wow. Very interesting. Look at that stock. It's all the way on the other side of the rock, that's and it reaches over to sort of amazing. get into the prevailing <laughs> yeah, current. Yeah, I was trying to... That's incredible. Kept going. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> it's amazing. It must be attached at another point. It doesn't quite look. It looks like it goes all the way down before it attaches. It does. Wow. That's I think you're right. You can see the shadow of it against the rock. It's so does it grow? So like if it started to attach itself on the back side of the rock and it said current's better here, current's better here, does it add to the stock to keep coming around until it says, oh, that's good current? I, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Looks like it. It's like a seedling yeah. pushing towards the light. That is so cool. That's very, very cool. I wonder if George ever thinks this is as cool as we think it is. <laughs> okay, I can go wide. Lots of things encrusting on the rock, maybe barnacles on there too. Hard to tell. You uh, keep it. Colophacus. Oh, yeah. Get that one, Melania? Colophacus. Colophacus. It kind of takes us for a second and then. I haven't seen one like quite that big. We've seen one lots of girls. Hiding behind the rock here where there's not so much current. Small. Back into the pinks. Yeah. A lot of hemicorallium oh. here. No, I've lost it. Come down. Yeah. Wow. Mmm. Pretty. Come right down. I'm gonna drop down the rock here. altitude is less than it says it is because okay. I've got this one big one right in front of it. Yeah. Let's see if we can get our tether wrapped around that rock there. <laughs> <laughs> Laid in between the two. Okay, we have a request to uh, look look for more of those extremely shiny rocks. Roger. I know uh, the ones we saw earlier were well attached to the outcrop, but maybe there's some that we can find. I'm loving this as we scale this cliff and just seeing coral on coral on coral. Yeah, don't blink. I'm just going to look down for a second, Dan. Yeah, all right. But I've been there, I know what's there. And that was a... Look at that uh, Atalanta view. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Colophacus? I'm... Yeah, that was the big sponge. Oh, I see. And then all of these are Paragorgia, Primnoids, and Hemicorallium. Yes. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> Mind you, there's, there's that right there. There, there's the... Wow. That's the Colophacus. Yeah. And then... So cool. It's the same one, but a little more sane uh, angle because of the current, obviously. It's just uh, on the limit for her route side. That stock's got to be like two meters. Yeah, that's crazy. And we don't see it blowing in the wind. I mean, I know it's uh, <coughs> shielded by that rock, but right. 
it's still just incredible. Yeah, you'd think that the top would just get pushed. That rock texture is interesting too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Katie and Roxa. Can we get a zoom on the rock? Could possible? they have you with us? I'm trying to figure out if they're sure, go ahead, yeah. barnacles. Roxa must be getting or big. Yes. Actually, uh, zoom out for a sec, Jeff. I'll go touch there. Okay. Look at that sponge stock. <laughs> that is yeah, nuts. Can't get over that. That's <laughs> crazy. I wonder how tall, long that is. I cannot kind of okay. guesstimate. It's. I feel so like it's definitely a few meters. <laughs> is it probably as long as Herc? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a bit longer. If you can um, drop down and look for some more of these shiny rocks. Yeah. But I know it's a little dangerous here. So, w if we can wait till you're in a better position. Are those barnacles or are those? Yeah, we're, we're gonna figure that out. We're gonna come get a touch here and then we'll. Yeah, like that sort of bright coating. Okay, Jeff, you can zoom in tighter there. <laughs> barnacles. Thank you. All right. Mystery right. solved. It almost looked like they formed a pattern on the rock when I first first looked at it. Yeah. There's another big colophagus. Yeah, that and was a another big one. Big one. Oh, you can see it in the Atalanta view. I think. Oh, yeah. It's reflecting your light. That doesn't help. There it is, you can see it. Oh, it's taking forever to get there. So I have the laterals just pinned at the moment. Really? <laughs> yeah. I can't go broadside into this wind. That's like a gigantic rose. Yeah. Amazing and a polyopagon right to the left of it, looks like. Yeah, this is really the land of the giant sponge here. Land of the giant sponges and small corals, but big fan corals. Uh, wait, I know the name. I know the name. I wrote it down. Summer. Primnoid. Yeah. That's really pretty. Wow. It's amazing. It, the weight of it can be supported. It doesn't weigh much. I was gonna say, do they have weight in water? <laughs> Man, they probably relatively not. Relatively neutral. Probably, yeah. But still, just the drag of it. Yeah. So, what direction are these currents going? We're uh, broadside to it now. Yeah, they keep sp spinning around the pinnacle, so we're not steady up on on the herc orientation necessarily. It's probably coming downhill. Yeah, generally kind of downhill. Our booty. 
Perks at 255 right now. Wow, that's a great shot. Push it just a little for us, Jeff. That's a polygon? Polyopagon? Yes, to the left. Yeah, it's like surreal. Look at this. Would it be possible for you to get on the other side of this and then maybe that's a nice slope to drop down on and, and look for a um, microbio sample? Sure. I wonder, um, drive around in a big circle. <laughs> so it goes downhill to the north here, so we can drop down this way if you're happy with that. Roger that. 20? Yeah. Uh, nope. Not yet. Negative on the move. Yeah, we can look around anywhere. It's convenient. I, I just didn't want your tether to get hooked around a pinnacle. Hello there, from, um, greetings from Friday Harbor AP Biology class. They're enjoying this break from their exam review day. This is a nice way to take a break from exams. Yeah, for sure. And so for Beth, we're looking for just a really dark rock. Dark, shiny, yeah. Um, nice crust formation. I'm guessing that's you, Kotachi, controlling my... Probably the best place to try to sit down is where the, we see the most... Just reading the comments. Kind mm -hmm. of no, no worries. ...options for sampling. This is no. tough, tough terrain. a nice spin move. Yeah, going uh, into it or with it, just can't quite go broad, broad, broad side. side to it. Yeah, just need to find a place where the slope lines up with the direction that you want to be in. All right, once we get the below the crest of the hill, we should have some more control. Okay. Typically, it's just it's usually ripping over the top of the hill there. zigzag down but none of these guys are the shiny variety at least from this viewpoint mid watch stretch more like almost paw watch stretch though yeah it was hard to remember where you were when we saw the real shiny spots was it we were facing north on the south side of the yeah, we were, yeah. Yeah. I could come back around to the south if you want. It was kind of on the south side of the pinnacle there. Yeah. So I can get around there. I must say, these chairs are very comfortable. The most comfortable <laughs> office chairs I've experienced in my life. It should be a lifetime guarantee, thousand bucks a piece. Yep. And you get any spare part for them. There's another big stock just up on the left there. Yeah, yeah I think that was the same one. We came we came full circle around and it is, now we're yeah. looking at the other okay. side of it. I had to kind of zigzag to get down below the uh, crest of the cliff there because Go forward, just not sideways. Yeah. Herc's uh, 
set up to go forward when it comes to the power. Can you try to look at this face? Yeah, can do. Oh god, I'm coming down. No, I'm right below you. I'll stay up there. We'll tangle our tether. Not quite as shiny as we would like. No, no, these are shiny. Looks like a big pillow. Just gonna zoom out to the south here. Uh, George, can we get a move uh, 20 meters south, please? There's a question. Why aren't there any fishes at the bottom of the sea? Definitely at uh, tether limits now. Yeah. So do you want me to come down? There are, but yep. yeah. As long as you got altitude. There are quite a bit less. Up to the south of you, you can spin around. Because there's visited less for them to eat, I presume. Um, not seeing a lot of small uh, mobile critters that they'd like to eat. Although, it does seem to be a good amount of stuff in the water. That's a very good question. Yeah, that should do it. Look at that. Look at all those bamboo whips. Yeah. This dive's almost like an amalgam of all the other dives we've been on. Like, yeah. Seeing the hemichorallium dense parts, primnoid dense parts. I'm getting kind of lost around this boulder field. Yeah, no, I just went to the south, so we... I went kind of down to where we were before. Down the cliff, yeah, and I'm yeah. coming back up rapidly. But I'm not seeing anything kind of shiny down here. I still have no uh, real control over Atalanta here. Yeah, right now I'm pulling it. I'll come back sure. around here. Just trying to drop down there below the. Hill yeah, if you guys, guys want to get set up, but um, there's, wow. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'm going to come up. Okay, so I can stop coming up for a sec, see if I can come back around. Nope. <laughs> uh, do a quick uh, five down for me, Paul. Five what? Down? Yeah, quick five down. Zero delta. Yeah, all right. Current's got me now, tail to tail. There we go. Classroom from Friday Harbors asking if we're seeing any highly surprising biology on this dive. I've been pretty surprised on just how different it is location to location and some of the size of the 
the sponges we've been seeing. We saw one that was even bigger than a vehicle. Um, so anytime you see something that big, it's it's quite surprising. Um, and just some of the density of the fan coral we've been seeing has been pretty remarkable. So definitely some surprises so far on this dive. Okay, we're kind of on the east side now, so <coughs> looking for rocks, shiny rocks. Shiny rocks. I think all the shiny ones are at the very top where the current is. Gale force across the top of the hill there. Oh, another. Okay, Paul, you can come back around to the north. As well. Barnacle covered yep. rock here with some Christ gorged corals on it. Looking a little more shinier. Hard to tell. Yeah, potentially. behind the uh, crest of the ridge out, yeah. of the, out of the a lot nicer now yeah can actually control the vehicle Dense barnacle coverage okay, and 20 north. Some price gorgets too. You can move 20 north. Bridge, this is Nev. We get 20 meters north, please. Are there um, hmm. some shiny ones here, Dwight? I don't oh. know if there are any of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. You want me to check them out? I don't know if Dwight's still in here. Yeah, it. yep, I'm here. Sorry, I did. Uh, yeah, there's a. Yeah, I poked up one right there. In the yeah, that this one here? Yep. Or the one below it. Looks like the. Uh, circles showing here. Might be attached. That looks one, pretty attached. The one at the bottom of the screen looks loose. This one? Yep, that one's loose. One to the right of it's loose. That one's loose. Do that we have one a looks shiny. Of these kind of front ones. Is this loose here? It's. I guess it's more attached right behind your glove. Oh. Uh, that looks pretty attached, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I like this one. Do you know what that's referring to? Oh, yeah.
Is this for bath or not? Yeah, for bath. Okay. Can we zoom in a little bit? Move it closer to the camera, it'll be. Need a little more light for that to. Yeah, end. sorry. Stand by. Uh. We can put it in one of the Starboard Lambda or Omega, and oh. uh, no, this got will go it, in the it. front, and we'll pair it with the Niskin as well. Your jaws. Yep. Close your jaws. You're gonna lose it. Touch it on the box and it'll pop open. But leave your don't open your jaws so wide. Close, close, close. Touchdown. Did it go in? Good Did job. It? Did you miss it? Oh. I'm not sure. Let's can we oh. I thought it went in. I think it did. Can we push oh back yeah. out it's on the... No, I think I see it. it it's, it's in the bubble. It's in there. Yeah, nice. Nice one. Okay, good this good. Uh, is this our first Niskin? Yeah. Sorry, I was afraid it's gonna drop into the vehicle there. Yeah. Would have been game over. Can you record the oxygen here too? Okay, no problem. Someone watching the Niskin? Yeah, I'm watching. Niskin. Alright. Where's nice. the oxygen levels on the screen? The entire Watch the Niskin. Very satisfying. Which number is she most in? Both uh, micromoles. 79.02 micromoles per liter. 79.10. Yep. Okay. Micromoles? All right, we don't have too much time left on our watch. Let's try to get at least a two and maybe on our way towards three. That'd be great. Okay, Katachi, kick that. Right again. Bridge, this is Nav. Uh, let's go 20 meters at, uh, north. All right, good job. Thanks for coming back around for that, that one. That looked pretty good. Uh, sorry for Thank the you. boring blue water there. Just trying to avoid that and I got caught. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as the uh He's still yeah. all barnacles. There could be some hydroids in there too, but you on a zoom it looks like to barnacles. the right. You got enough. We're um I think just about at tether limits. Oh well, there's a lot of coarse a coarse sand in there. Yeah, got sediment. a lot of down to come. Yeah. Zoom come in there too. The yellow might not yeah, go tight. Would that be shell hash? It does kind of look like it, doesn't it? That's 
potentially barnacle or shells. Wow. Interesting. I second the barnacle shell yep. idea. Oh, okay. Great, thanks. Wow. That's, That's an incredible. incredible graveyard. It really is. That's a, just a huge accumulation. I wonder if there's something around there eating them and that's their bathroom. Yeah, this is like a barnacle horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Here is the scene where the crime took place. I think the wind blows really hard. They just, maybe they accumulate there from the, the drop out of the current right there. Yeah, probably. Coral diversity is just is. sort of really limited to Chrysogorgia here. Interesting how it changed. See an enemy. What are the most common octocorals found in this region? Does absence or um, does absence or presence of these species signify health on um, on the seamounts? It's an interesting question. So you've been seeing a lot of different octocorals very frequently, like Whoa, these chrysogorgias we're seeing a lot of. Oh yeah. Looks like there's that looks like there's like zoanthids on there too. Actually, yeah. Could we zoom in on sort of this area? Sure. Light too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. Whoa. Hmm. Barnacles and then. Yeah. Could that just be where? Th Barnacles used to live and they fell off? Yeah, potentially. That's great, thank you. Bridge, this is Nev. Another 20 meters north, please. You read my mind. What is porch light? Porch light, all right. like a series of these rocks that are just covered almost in this barnacles and yellow stuff. It's like some it's smaller just take the vehicle. sponges. Mm -hmm. You want to go that way, just let go of the controls. <laughs> Not there. Are all the rocks and boulders basalt, or are there other types? I believe they're all um, basalt, but I'll refer to. Well, I'm, I'm getting a nod. I th yes. I think so. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. But as we saw from Val's presentation yesterday, you never know. True. Higher, higher on the, some of the other seamounts, uh, you know, further upslope with some of the volcanoclastic uh, uh, rocks, which are sedimentary. They're still volcanic in origin, but um, comprised of cemented together sort of breccia or, sh or uh, ash or other uh, bits and pieces of the volcano that cement together to form these sedimentary rocks. Mm -hmm. A giant sponge back there. In the oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is the other edge again, where it's. This one is reaching over the top like that. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Land on the back, grow up to look out the front. It's smart because it keeps your stock kind of out of the, the main, or the yeah. base of it, out of the main current, so you get a strong hold. Very cool. The 
so pretty. Yeah, this seamount's interesting. It, it seems older to me. It seems more weathered. Mm. I could be wrong, but maybe it's not tied to the other seamounts. Mm. King George, this is Nev. Another 20 meters north, please. <laughs> King George. <laughs> West side has all the kind of big bouldery ones there. Yeah. <laughs> Might be interesting to see what the east side looks like where we're heading towards these other contours. Yeah, we did drop on the east side at for a Oh earlier, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's where we kinda came up the hill and got the rock. Just peeking over the uh drop down to the west there we're on the thin ridge like rock here. This dive is expected to be 16 hours long. And uh, looks like a uh, sperm whale fossil. <laughs> it over maybe <laughs> <laughs> it really does <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was really good observation <laughs> <laughs> Moby Dick <laughs> Moby Rock here lies Moby Rock <laughs> It'd be cool if there's a, a uh, big tail at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> I mean, it does taper down at the end. end. It's so yeah. pretty uncanny. It's a rock that landed mm. on its tail and broke it off. Yeah. Looks like Ryan doesn't want to move. I can <laughs> be the first to move. I can go. Let me just write this down. Okay. Uh. We're at a good point. Oh. Bye-bye, Ryan. Thank you. Lunch time. Will we rock? Are we at two or three? We're at two. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> Got a ways to go. All right. Actually, this is pretty perfect. Uh. Yep. Uh, we will be, um, we have an early bird here that's ready to take over. Bridge, this is Nev. I'm just, I'm just another 20 meters north, so please. Yeah, and um, there'll be some movement in here as we change watches in the next 10, 15 minutes. As the uh, 8 to 12 watch trades out with the 12 to 4. This next move should bring us to waypoint two. Hand over at waypoint two. Nice. Twenty two hundred meters water depth. Twenty two 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 two. Wow, so yeah, we only went about 80 meters up slope. Did we just make it to a point two? Yeah. Yay! Pretty much there. Winning! Just 
some time for the next Val Rock. She'll come on watch and pick it. Sorry. Here. If you wanted that. We did get a Niskin on that last sample, right? Yeah, yeah we did. Your light, yeah, okay, your light is over there for some reason. What's that? Sorry, I was just talking to Justin. There you go. Amazing. Hi, everybody. It's Justin here. Hey, Justin. Welcome to the uh, 8 to 12 watch. <laughs> Thank you so much. We are the... We are the King George and the Carl Hunters watch. We are the nocturnals. Ooh. <laughs> Entering into the diary. Mm -hmm. That's true, you don't, yeah. You We've been doing so many night shifts lately. We have a rare noon, noon to four watch today. Yeah. This looks pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really neat. We've had some huge boulders with some amazing, uh, polyopagons on them that were like the length of perk <laughs> and then there's uh what is that other one called i have it written the, down here the catcher's mitt sponge yeah oh yeah forget the name of that one there was a satellite um sponge colophagus Got time to get around. Oh, Colophagus. Colophagus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Colophagus. Okay. That's, that's the, the one. Is, the one uh, with the long stem and the ball on the top. Or was it? And then there was the, the polyopagon that was like the width of Herc <laughs> and some. What's some change? It was huge. All right. Excited. Yeah. And we already already collected a couple rocks. Val will be excited about that. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's always these walls that are just packed. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Curry. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mal and I is hungry. <laughs> Among about ten other options. I'm because I'm we're spoiled. <laughs> yes. What is the uh you're Justin Umholtz. What's the other Justin's last name? Wong. Wong? Low. 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 Wrong. J Lo. Right. Yeah, my last name's fun because when I'm on the phone, people think I've forgotten my last name, and I'm saying, um... Hold. Holt, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Paul. Comedy come ensues. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Shout out to Liho Liho Elementary School. We had so much fun doing a ship to shore with you today, kindergartners. I was telling the crowd that we have 11 visit ship to shore interactions today. Yeah. And then they're like, um, is that like a new record? It's definitely a new record for this expedition, for this cruise. But uh, I want to say that I was on a cruise that we had 13 in one day. Wow. And, and yeah, it's like, you nice do one an hour, and you take into account the time zone differences and all that. Thirteen is about the, the max that you could do. Eight plus the three time zones plus mm -hmm. a couple extra. Mm -hmm. A couple in Hawaii or whatever. But yeah, I, I want to say thirteen. I think there's a uh, something that'll come off the close to that next week on the schedule. Nice little black coral. We didn't really see any of those last dive. Alrighty. Hi, Christopher. See you later, folks. Thank you. Um, Malanai out. Bon appetit. Merci. So looks like a good uh, shift change rock here. Uh, yes, we are. So oh, thanks. Coming up on noon.
Honolulu time and ship time. So changing over to the 12 to 4 watch. So we can, uh, so 8 to 12, can go uh, get some lunch. So something those, uh, those kindergarten classes were learning about was sort of the interrelationship of different species uh, and their interaction with their habitat. And I think this picture right here is such a great example. Uh, you're seeing that the, the geologic features are raised up and heavily taken advantage of by these different corals they can get up into the current. And then if we look closely at the corals themselves, you'll see different invertebrates who have climbed up and using it as sort of structure and habitat to get even more into a good feeding zone. Oh, sorry. That's Dan out. I think we're always scratching our heads trying to figure out how all of these different shapes affect current flow and food flow. Why here and not somewhere else? Yeah, I was uh, watching the dive from uh, downstairs in the lounge before coming up and uh, just kind of amazing how quickly everything's been uh, changing from spot to spot. Sound check. One, two. All right. Sound good. Thanks. So a fun little uh, engineering challenge for students out there is to develop the structure of a creature that would be really good at uh, feeding like this the kind of the filter feeding and suspension feeding what would be shapes that would help you catch the most food and still stay stable bless you Oh yeah, Chris is reminding me. I thank you. I was going to announce that. So Dr. Jeff Drazen is about to give an hour uh, seminar, or an hour webinar, I should say, on the connections between uh, deep sea mining, uh, marine protected areas like monuments and uh, fisheries. So if you go to, if you type in NOAA ONMS and webinar, uh, it should pop up, and then you can register and watch. As long as you have two screens going and still watch us. <laughs> there you go. Sounds like the best of both worlds yeah. there. That'll also be archived. So that same search, those search terms I gave you um, will take you to the main page. And then over on the right, you'll see a click, uh, a hyperlink that would take you to the archives. And there's a veritable uh, college degree worth of information. Still there, Raj. So one of our onshore scientists uh, is suggesting that um, the uh, large fan size may be suggestive of uh, no real uh, disturbance in this area for quite a while. Radio check. Sounds good. Out and clear. Clear, clear, All clear. clear. clear Raj. All right, Val. So, what's the game plan? Looks like we're going north. Um, yep. I think uh, that sounds like a good course of action. Uh, I think we've been proceeding around point two knots, from what I've heard. 
Okay. So I think uh, keeping that pace uh, should be, uh, or, um, that should work for now. Sure thing. All right. 335? Three, three, 335, three, Raj. Bridge, this is Nav. Good afternoon. Uh, can we move the ship on bearing 335, 50 meters, speed 0 0.2 knots, please? That's affirmative. Tiny little black corals mixed in with all those others. Oh, yeah, I was noticing that. We didn't really see a whole lot on the last dive, did we? No, we did not. It was kind of like Chrysogorgia and Hemicorallium land. Yeah. Last dive. Um, a lot of uh, Metallogorgia, too. Let's a lot see. of, oh, that's right, a lot of Iridogorgia. And, um, and a lot of tall uh, whip bamboo. Mm -hmm. Those are cool. Those were cool. Look at that. And then the giant sponges. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. And then yeah. there were the Bolosoma and giant sponges. <laughs> and the yeah, uh, we've seen a couple of polyopagons. Uh, from what I've been seeing from the previous uh, previous watch uh, footage down in the lounge, and uh, some of these um, quite uh, some of these other sponges with uh, quite long stalks, I'm blanking on the name of those right now. Yeah, when I was changing out, they said they saw some colophagus sponges. Maybe that was. There it. we go. I think that was it. So yeah, it's been uh, pretty busy as far as uh, uh, communities, population density here. Quite uh, quite a bit going on. We had a question. Uh, do we know if any of the dominant corals and sponges of these seamounts can inhabit other species once they're established? Oh, or inhibit? Oh, inhibit. Sorry, I thought it said inhabit. Oh, like kind of Here's using me it. in my glasses. Inhibit. <laughs> <laughs> like Completely different question. Kind of like Ooh, the uh, allelopathic traits of redwood trees, for example. Oh, yeah. um, well, I don't know. Did you hear that, uh, scientists ashore? What do you What do you guys think? Did you Do you know of any? Can you reread that? Do we know if any of the dominant corals and sponges on these seamounts can inhibit other species once they're established? That's a really good question. Yeah, I'd be excited to see what they say. Wow, that is a gorgeous rock formation. I didn't, I just turned my head. That rock is all dressed up. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of polishing on the manganese crust too. I think these are primnoids, but did the last watch say that yet? If they're, um, if they took a peek at them, I'm not sure. I'm still catching yeah. up a little bit. Okay, Asako, did they take a peek? Do you mind? Jess, if we have a second, would you mind zoom or Jess and uh, Rhett, would you mind zooming on one of the fans? One of the fans? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. We have exactly a few seconds. It's great. Looks <laughs> like we are about to have some answers to questions. Coming in. pennies in the bank. <coughs> also, the like whatever is yellow covering that oh, yes, skeleton the top is here. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Is that alive still, or is that <coughs> just? Skeleton? I think that's something covering a dead skeleton. How about I go right here? We can hopefully get them both in one shot. Sure. No, oh, we have a little crab friend hanging out too. All right, go ahead and push out in there, please. Let's get there. Mm -hmm. I think they're primnoids. What is that black filament? Is that yeah. garbage? No, that's the, that looks like, oh wait, yeah, actually, maybe oh. it is. Huh. Going back to my youth, it looks like old cassette tape ribbon. Oh <laughs> it really gosh, does, it yeah. Does. Does. You want to come partial away, please? Uh, Sako says primnoids, yeah. Morella species. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's good. Are those, that almost looks like <laughs> algae or something, but it's not. Is that that arborescent? The arborescent forums. It looks yeah. so droopy, but maybe, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's still a crab or squat lobster hanging out on there. Oh, I please. Yeah, thanks for looking at that. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, uh, one of our scientists ashore, Meredith, says uh, she doesn't actually know, and I, this is an answer to the uh, question coming in from uh, the chat, something that shallow corals can do, 
So it is possible, but not much is currently known about deep coral reproduction outside of some select species. On the opposite track, some corals only settle where they have signals from other corals. Hmm. Cool. That is very cool. So they, so these corals, they, uh, is it kind of like a chemical communication, like what uh, some trees will do? Seeing some pretty big sponge skeletons here. Some of those whip corals. <coughs> yeah. At one time there was a lot of rock movement in this area. Yeah, it looks like they didn't um, yeah, travel sure very far. Thank you. So they're all pretty, pretty angular, pretty large. This is also a gentler, uh, more gently sloping, uh, smaller volcano that we're on today. So uh, we wouldn't expect a whole lot of uh, transport of some of these larger fragments very far, presumably from uh, where they erupted. Getting back into more of those whip bamboo corals. Yeah. I think we're seeing a higher density of are those, am, am I correct in thinking those are sponges or are those corals? Sponges. Okay. The, oh, the, the smaller things. ones down there? Yeah. And yeah. then there's Chrysogorgia too, I think. Okay. Although it's sort of like some of them look like dead Walteria. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So this is reminding me a little bit of the uh, sponge dive. But yeah, I think you're right that we're seeing a lot of uh, Chrysogorgia around here, that kind of bottle brush shape. Yes. Uh, uh, coral. I can pan my head around here and see if we see anything different, but it looks, yeah, pretty abundant. It definitely does. That's a cool shot in Atalanta. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, playground. Yeah. There's another big fan That's community cool. over on our left. Yes, please. And I think the previous watch already took a close up on the stuff on the rock, the kind of yellowish white looking stuff. Did oh, it, yeah. Did yeah. anybody catch that, what it was? It was either no. barnacles or that uh, stolonifera. Did you guys want to look at it? Or if, if, if we have time, maybe, I guess. Yeah, we can take a quick peek. Sure. Let's get my nose here. No problem. <coughs> Val, can you talk about like how we get this kind of bouldery structure? Um, it seems okay. a little different than what we've seen in the past. Put a push on in there, but I'm please. not exactly sure how it got this way. Um, I've been kind of looking at that and wondering myself. So uh, I will come back to that it's if still I see barnacles, something. I guess. Yeah, or barnacles or limpets? No Sorry, barnacles. get some partial light, please. Tell. Let's get you guys a better, better, uh, more stable shot there. They look a little different from the other ones we looked at. All right, go ahead and push yeah. on in again. You can see some of them are hollowed out. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's barnacles. Yeah. yeah. Barnacles. Yeah. All right, full light, please. Tiny little ones. Yeah. Earlier on, up from the downstairs screen, it looked like there were just, well, just like this big boulder. Yeah. Just completely covered. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how these are coming about just yet. Kind of reminds me of like glacial erratics, which I know that they are not, because <laughs> we did not have glaciers in the tropical ocean. <laughs> no basal glaci glaciation in oceans. Hi, so we are diving on the Argonaut Seamount, currently at 2,216 meters. Is this dive number eight? Nine, Shall nine we 20. keep moving or do you like to? We can keep moving. Then we started with. Pressure, this is now. Mm -hmm. Another move, 335, 50 meters. Can do a partial zoom here. 
This is our ninth dive. Ninth Do you want to well. frame the coral there? Yeah. Beautiful. Jess, you always call such picturesque zooms. <laughs> <laughs> Good at this. You want to come a little wide and we get the whole one in the frame? That's great. Oh, wow. And we can get the black background. Oh, that's yeah. setting us up nicely. Yeah. Drama. <laughs> <laughs> Those barnacles really add a nice element. They do. All right, I'll head on out, but cool spot. Definitely. Yeah, I keep seeing more of these, uh, these little local highs, just one after the other, kind of looming in the background. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, did you finish uh, saying why, why you thought the geology was this way, why these large boulders were there? Um, pretty much my current take is, um, I don't know. Um, I'm going to keep looking at stuff, and if uh, I see something that kind of helps provide an answer to that question, I'll, uh, I'll uh, speak up. But yeah, right now, not, not really sure why the, the morphology that we're seeing. We've seen stuff kind of like this here and there on other dives, but uh, not with this kind of frequency. Some big hemichorallium again. Oh yeah. Yeah, hemichorallium right there. Yeah. What predators might the barnacles have at this depth? I'm sorry? What predators might the barnacles have? Oh. Yeah, that sponge is absolutely caked in something. Fish? I don't know. Sometimes there are fish that will eat barnacles. But don't know down here. Do you think any of the, like, gastropods or anything could? Go ahead and push on in there, but maybe sea stars would eat them? That's good. Oh, sea stars, maybe. Do sea stars, are they able to digest barnacles? Uh... I imagine they would, right, they with their like <coughs> gripping can crack things open, and I gotcha. imagine they would crack them open. Got it's got like it's kind of frightening how powerful they are. Can these sea stars move their stomach out of their bodies like I think shallow like water? Most on? sea stars can d do that. At depth too, huh? Yeah, I guess you'd have to be pretty strong, maybe. Because I know that's how they get into shellfish. Right. Avert in their stomach. Water. Yeah, it's the craziest thing. Imagine if we ate like that. <laughs> no, thank It'd you. So no, I don't want to know what any of your stomachs look like. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so much easier. You just put a big plate that bloop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you urchins be able have to, like, teeth that come all together, and they can eat like coral and algae and stuff in the intertidal zone. Oh, but the Aristotle wow. lantern. Yeah. You know, I have teeth and I don't even like gristle. <laughs> Lila, I missed. Do you know what Chris is referring to with the heteroete species? The heterite? That heterite. was maybe the one we just zoomed on. Although it looks sort of similar to the thing we saw earlier that looked like a <coughs> uretid, maybe parafragella that Chris pointed out. It's hard to tell with those like wavy lettuce looking ones. There are like multiple families that sort of have gotcha. some that look that way. Yeah, a lot smaller rubble here, much smaller corals. So what we've been speculating on previous dives is that um, it's a little harder for uh, uh, things like corals or sponges to uh, uh, anchor themselves on these, these smaller pieces. So I don't know if this is just like a something that's been populated more recently or it's just harder to survive on this kind of uh, loose, rubbly, I don't even want to call it substrate, just debris field. Yeah, we just passed a, uh, a dead stalk that looks like the whatever it was had fallen over on. That little rock it was attached to was too, too light for its load. Yeah, it got a little top heavy. Yeah. We've seen that in a few other places too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as long as they can still filter feed, they can uh, they can thrive uh, 
sideways like that. Would, would it be all right to check out what this group, what this stuff is over here? I think that was those barnacle shells from earlier. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a zoom on that while we were eating. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Do you guys still want to look at it, or? Yeah, let's get a quick look at that. All right, Raj. Just to kind of get every, everybody on this watch synced up. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. It doesn't look like barnacle hash anymore. No, it looks like coarse sand. What are you? Sorry, you want to come partial wide, please? Yeah, sure. I don't know what that is. Okay. All right, I'm stable now. Go ahead and push on it. Well, it does look like there are shell fragments in there. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. And then some basaltic little pieces. Pebbles. pebbles. Yeah. What's the darker colored stuff, though? Looks like just rock fragments. Just rock. That's maybe uh, oxidized or uh, reacted a little bit chemically. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't look like hyaloclastite or anything. This all just looks like little bits of um, volcanic rock and manganese crust and then uh, shell fragments. Future breccia, future yeah. hyaloclastite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come wide, please. I don't know if it'll Thanks. be future Thanks, hyaloclastite, Jess. but it'll be future a very interesting sedimentary rock because it's, it's going to have both uh, volcanic and uh, biotic fragments in it. Oh, and then we and get some sponges. very abrupt. Yeah, no, not that many more corals up here. Yeah, oh. we're back into lava flow territory. Chris Kelly says we just passed a uh, hormathid anemone off our right, if anybody caught that. Uh, yeah. And yeah, there's a lot more of this heavier sediment. Carbon. Yeah, looks like it's so growing shiny. Why like so shiny? Uh, might be some of that polishing, um, that polishing effect that Kira was talking about. Oh, I was oh, maybe for the previous week watch. Ago? A week ago. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, the current can uh, erode the manganese crusts and uh, give them that that shine. I had, I had no idea that was um, that was even possible, but you know, as a geologist, it kind of seems like on a long enough time scale, water tends to be the thing that wins when it comes to uh, rocks. You know, put water in a system, it it will eventually tend to uh, break a rock down. Well, what's the hardness of the manganese crust? Uh, that depends a lot on um, kind of how the crust formed, because uh, you can have versions that are like really dense and compact, and uh, you know really internally strong, and then you can have uh, some of these crusts that are, uh, you know, they're they're structured a little differently, so they're more fragile and breakable and uh, uh, just friable, and and they just kind of fragment when you touch them, and they they get everywhere um, and as Justin and I were finding out last night when we were cleaning up after uh, using the rock saw so um, some of them uh, probably similar in hardness to like calcite or so on the Mohs hardness scale others can be uh, much softer much more difficult to work with Did oh and speaking any? oh go ahead sorry I was wondering if you got anything interesting from your samples from last night? Uh, yeah. yeah, I haven't fully uh, described a bunch of those because I was pretty tired last night and um, <laughs> decided it would be a good time to catch up on some sleep. So I um, uh, haven't really been in the lab today just yet, but um, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, taking a look, a closer look at what we cut open yesterday. So <clears throat> last night I was uh, cutting open uh, rocks from uh, dive 1921, our, uh, our most recent dive prior to this one. And uh, it looks like we did pick up a, a mixture of different lithologies and uh, uh, some slightly different uh, 
volcanic textures than what we've seen so far. Um, so we have more of those ancaromitic basalts with a mixture of uh, olivine and cladopyroxene, and some with some quite big, quite abundant crystals. And uh, that's that's been really interesting. And then we've had some other stuff that is... Uh, right, can like you push it partial on this rock here? That's great there. Oh yeah, look at that. It's weird colors. Yeah, uh, what yeah. is going on? That is a hyaloclastite outcrop, if I'm not mistaken. Does that not look like the like rubble, sort of? It's same coloration, but it looks pretty firm, like crusted like on Like this is crusty, but would the rubble have been like an eroded this? Ah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a hyaloclastite deposit again. Is this just uh, this organism here that we are panning off? What uh -huh. is that exactly? <laughs> on the right or okay. on the bottom left? Yeah. Yeah, could we pan down into that corner? Is sure. it just like an anemone that's somehow closed up or I don't I think it's a slime star, isn't it? Slime star? Mm, Whoa. No. It's an very anemone. Discus. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I think it's a closed up anemone. Yeah, it does seem closed up. I think that's what I looked like before I got up this morning. <laughs> Do you think it's a closed up anemone? <laughs> Yeah. You know what's kind of interesting is that, oh, like, there you can see the ring where where a section of it used to be. You see what I'm talking about? There's like a dark ring yeah. underneath it. Oh yeah, that yeah. is interesting. I've seen that dark ring on a couple rocks and not known what it was. And I guess it's just like past anemone homes, like a hold fast or something. Yeah. Yeah, like they didn't leave anything behind, but the rock is like altered below mm -hmm. where they used to be, I or discolored. I think what's throwing me off is just how big the base is. Yeah. yeah. But maybe it's just really sucked Pull itself away, in close. Oh, we'll uh, Steve Oskovich says yep. anemone. Yeah. Bridget, this is enough. Uh, another move, same step, please. Yeah, yeah so we're definitely seeing chunks of old hyaloclastite deposits. And then that looks more of that um, like shell rock fragment mixture. <clears throat> so this may be some sort of near vent deposit again. But yeah, one of the other things that I cut open last night um, that we haven't uh, seen on previous dives is this very dark colored rock. It's um, It looks like it's pretty well preserved. There's no vesicles in it, um, effectively aphiric, and it's got... Um, it's, it's got some uh, fractures in it, too, here and there. And uh, it's very hard to tell what exactly it is, but I'm wondering if that's uh, some of the intrusive dike material that we were trying to get. Um, because some of those uh, columnar rocks that we were getting, um, it's a little hard to tell if they're in some spots, whether or not they came from inside or outside of the, uh, the dikes that we were seeing. So we picked up a few along the way with that columnar structure to them. And uh, sure enough, some of them uh, um, you know, it's our best bet for an intrusive rock, but that's something we can study uh, under microscopes. Should we, we get zoom on one home. of the orange coral when oh. we have a second? Good, thanks. Oh, I was yeah, just sure going to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those rocks were so incredibly dense. Yeah, some of them were uh, pretty difficult to cut. Um, just took a while to get the saw to move through them. Wow. Yeah. They look, it looked like just pure, like you said, no vesicles and just... Yeah, those are very hard to describe because they don't have a lot of uh, petrographic features that help that aid us with our, uh, you know, field classifications. So it's something. In order to determine what exactly they are, we need uh, some microscope work of a couple of different kinds, and then uh, uh, some geochemical analysis to uh, assign a rock type to them. So sometimes you can do that in the field. Sometimes you can't. So those are pretty cool. I'm still just kind of blown away by the last dive because uh, getting to see the inside of... Go ahead and push on in there, please. That's good. Yeah, what appears to be Star volcanic pathies. plumbing is... All right, go ahead and push on in a bit more. It was a pretty unique opportunity. I never thought I would see something like that. Yeah, I think that's staropathies. Okay. Definitely a black coral. There's such a distinct, like, color. Is that a Besides little the, the, uh, snail? Besides the black like coral portion. Oh yeah, it's like a dark skeleton. Cool. All right, full wide, please. 
Chris Kelly is throwing out a, a thought that he wonders if the barnacles eat coral planula larvae and therefore prevent at least some corals from settling where the barnacles are really dense like we're seeing here. These are the kind of questions oh, we're that's always, interesting. You know, these that take a long time to answer just as we can build up knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, these areas are normally so inaccessible to us that, you know, we just get these little, you know, these we're, we're just probing, just scratching the surface and getting tiny little bits of information and trying to connect that to other places that we're lucky enough to be able to probe to see if we can get a broader picture to emerge. And this is coming from the guy who's been on an awful lot of these dives. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of this deposit over here. Oh, oh wow. wow, that's a yeah. huge... Uh, oh. Sorry. I don't know what um, Beth is looking for in push cores. Oh, this won't be push coreable though. This is. Yeah, I think okay. that won't stay in it, will it? Yeah. I'm wondering yeah. if it would be worth a sample, but um, it'd be challenging to work with. I'm not sure we want to do a scoop. Hmm. You gonna go ahead and uh, actually stand by. Get a little lower here. Go ahead and push that in there, please. That, that should be good. It might drift around, so if you want to come a little wide. Yeah, that's a that's lot good. of shell fragments. Maybe some fine sediment, too, or is it all shell fragments, you think? All right, you can go ahead and push in a bit more. That's all shell fragments. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hmm. All right, I'm going to need to go, but... Full wide, please. Yeah. Right. yeah, no worries. Let's keep moving. Definitely, that was worth a zoom. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. It looks like it probably just came from this rock. You know, Agreed. just generations of things shedding. Yeah. I think you're right bits. about that. Yeah. All right. I'll make, I realize the porch light was on. Sorry about that, right? <laughs> make your life a bit easier now. <laughs> Is that a rock or a sponge? I think it's a sponge. I think it's a sponge. That's a big sponge. Yeah, let's go take a look. Sure thing. Oh, yeah. This is what the previous watch was telling us about. That thing is huge. Sofa, sofa sponges? Yeah. Polyopagon? I think so. We were Maybe. seeing a couple of these uh, in the previous watch, too. Or the Papasan chair. As <laughs> <laughs> Poly Upagon, Papasan. It's a good device to remember that. I wonder how many different associates are going to be there. Yeah. Roger that. Thank you. How strong is the current around here? There's a little bit of current. But okay. it's not like whipping, you know what I mean? Okay, so we're not fighting. No. Yeah, because Chris has been maintaining. curious here and there about what the what the current's like and uh, how that might be... Um, Go ahead and push one in there, partial. How that might be influencing the populations and the communities that we're seeing. Yeah. Just a reminder to the audience, those lasers are Come 10 centimeters wide. apart. Just to give you a sense of scale here. See if we can make it around to the other side. Kind of at the limits of my tether, we bit off to the side. See what we get. Oh uh, yeah, we're off to the side in uh, Adelina view there. <laughs> Satellite dish polyopagon, huh? That's pretty funny. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently that was what uh, they were calling them during 134. Maybe we should really go back through all of these old logs and compile a scientist joke book. Oh, God. With photos. <laughs> that would be so bad. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> well, wait, please. Would that, that too? Be? I'd, I'd read it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll come back under you there, Kelly. Oh, good to hear it, Chris. And yeah, we've been having a little bit of satellite connectivity move? issues yes, over please. the last few days. Chris, this is now another move. Same step, please. but it sounds like things are more resolved. So we're glad you're all hopefully seeing a
better quality picture again. Yeah, we've been trying to get that uh, pinned down the last few days and uh, had a ticket open with uh, onshore support and everything. So it looks like we're able to get data out. It's just something, something onshore that hasn't been uh, cooperating too well. So it's been the satellite, I think. Okay. But we have been addressing that with the satellite service provider. Yep. Yep. So much going on here. Yeah, sometimes things just kind of get a little wonky when you're uh, as remote as we are. So. Yeah. Well, I just mean. Oh, in I'm, front just, of us. I'm still yeah. talking about the satellites. <laughs> <laughs> so I still think it's an amazing feat of technology and just human achievement that we're able to uh, broadcast the stuff uh, basically live from the middle as far of the out as we are. Yeah, we're yeah. we're literally in the middle of nowhere. This is it's remarkable. Like such a first world problem sometimes to have uh, uh, you know, some little technological issues like that, but we're we're happy to. I mean, you know, we're we're still trying to get the highest quality uh, imagery out that we can. Uh, kind of grateful to be able to do that, be able to share that with everybody. Well, we had a viewer wondering if this might be part of an ancient shoreline. Hmm. Um, this one, probably not. Um, this is a very small uh, seamount and hasn't really undergone the same kind of development and growth into uh, something larger like some of the some of the really big EOs that we've been diving on. And I'm not really sure that this one has ever made it um, up above sea level. Uh, there's a pretty good chance that uh, the bigger geos actually did. At least parts of them. A couple black corals and a hemichorallium just below us. And then just bamboo whip forest. Because I think, I think we're going to hit the high point of Argonaut um, Seamount at the uh, end of this dive. And that's uh, about uh, 1940 meters below sea level. Oh, that's not an enemy. I was like, it's not a chonoclops? Oh, that'd be cool, but no. I could see how you, how it looked that way for sure. Yeah. That's, we that's have sweet. seen more chonoclops on this leg of the expedition than I, I've ever noticed before following different dives or past experience. It's been really fun. Right yeah. now on the gallery page of nautiluslive.org, you can actually watch a highlight video of a chonoclops yawning or extending its jaws, but the yawning part, I don't know if it's actually yawning. Who was telling me that that's one way they can take in a little bit of extra oxygen? I think that's why we all yawn, isn't it? It's true. <laughs> so maybe it is yawning. Perhaps. We had a question about how to spell polyopagon. It's P-O-L-Y. P-O-L-I. Oh, oh, really? P-O-L-I. Yeah. I just Google it. O. Polyopogon. Hmm. Maybe there's maybe somebody spelled it versions. wrong online. But there's there's a bunch of oh, interesting. P o l y o p a g o n is what I found. At least in our in our guides, it's P o l i o p o g o n. Polyopogon. Right. Uh, it looks like there might be two spellings because this is coming up with the uh, I version as well. Sometimes if ever happens. you're wondering which one is the accepted one, I always go to the World Register of Marine Species Worms, and that's how I figure out how all these crazy words are spelled. So if any of you want to go and check that out, you can let us know uh, the, what the history is. And often you'll find that there have been alternate spellings that were both accepted, and um, and you can figure out which one is the currently accepted version because things happens, do change. It happens in geology a lot too. Yeah, uh, there's something called a polypogon, um, <laughs> which is a very similar looking word uh, spelled with Y that is uh, apparently a beard grass, so. Beard grass? Yeah. <laughs> a nearly cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan genus of plants in the grass family, commonly known as beard grass or rabbit's foot grass. Oh. <laughs> uh, That's neat. From southern Europe. Interesting. So yeah, sometimes uh, trying to spell these uh, 
spell these uh, species or uh, genus names out um, can take you to some interesting corners of the internet that you may not have expected to. It takes me to some interesting corners of pronunciation. <laughs> I, I never seem to get it right. That too. Isn't there a, isn't there a, something called like a 10 degrees to Kevin Bacon or something like this on the internet? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Oh, is it six degrees? Something <laughs> like that, yeah. It's like, how, how quickly can you navigate from some random Wikipedia article to the Kevin Bacon page? <laughs> So these are very rounded. Yeah. This reminds me of like a floor of a riverbed. Yeah, does this imply that this is a high energy area, Val? Um, the weathering and rounding? Potentially. I'm wondering how much of that is uh, manganese crust buildup too. So I'm seeing mm -hmm. a fair amount of botryoidal texture. Um, on some of these rocks. Some of these are also quite uh, smoothed over. Although it looks like they've had some uh, other stuff potentially growing on them since, or sedimentation or something. I mean, it's hard. It takes some energy to move some big rocks this far, so. Interesting pile of boulders here. Also interested that we've been moving through something that seems to be dominated by uh, these whip corals for a while. Okay, here we go. Yeah, these are pretty proximal to some lava flows because we're starting to see some lobate flows that look like they're in place over here. Oh, I should mention, if anybody's missing Kylie's voice, she's doing a little bit of training here, so she's off SPL right now, but she is here. Thank you, yep. thank you. Yes, I am here. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Signature <laughs> statement. <laughs> In and out. <laughs> Somehow she just okay. becomes like a haiku right it. there. <laughs> right. I'll uh, do a little bit of uh, sea logging. <laughs> We're still seeing occasional black coral. I like that. It's nice to have that popping up again. Oh, sure. The shrimp are so bright. <laughs> they sure are, yeah. yeah. If I'm reading the contour map right, it looks like we're on a little bit of a plateau and then we're going to start hitting more incline again after we point three. Yep. Yeah, so uh, along our dive track, this is a little bit of a flatter area, so we're seeing more of this uh, just oh, rubble. Know. Definitely some glassy edges to some of this. Especially this is not? Mm-hmm. Very shiny edge. Uh, yeah, pretty shiny. Another more shim step, please. Val, did you want us to go up to point three knots during this flatty part, or would you rather we keep at point two? Uh, let's keep it at point two. Okay. I know it's not the most exciting thing, but um, I think things will get more exciting pretty soon. We're starting to see more uh, in place lava flows from the looks of it. So this is uh, sort of the stall point, the nose or the toe, if you will, of one right here. It does look like yeah. a nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> I think we're getting spoiled. We're talking about this not being as exciting. And we're in a forest of whip bamboo corals and <laughs> all are. kinds of stuff. And it still but beats it that nodule field that we spent like an hour <laughs> over that one, that one dive. <laughs> True. One of well, the little shell piles are interesting. Have you guys seen those anywhere else? No, we haven't. What is this? Just a dead sponge? Oh, that's a dying sponge or something. Yeah. I think. yeah. It's like an unhappy sponge. One of our viewers is noticing the change in oxygen levels. 
Yes. Oh, cool. Where are we at right now? Uh, let me take a look. Oh, do I have Grafana open? I used to have Grafana open. I don't know what happened to it. I was having, I took a couple tries for some reason to log in. So I think it, um, uh, I think it booted me off Grafana briefly. We're at about a 18% oxygen saturation or 77.5 micro. Yeah, it's gone up a lot. Yeah, it has. Surprisingly, we were finding quite dense communities and pretty low oxygen environments over the last few dives. I think yeah. more in the 30, 40, 50 range. Yeah, shout out to the viewer who uh, alerted us to that. Yeah. I'm going to do a partial zoom on this, this piggly wiggly squirrel thing. I know, all the whip bamboos are so cute That's today. That's great, thank you. Yeah, they're all curly. Yeah, someone uh, has all these cattails and pigtails out here. Yeah. Okay, full eye, please. For some reason, that brings to mind that old movie Pippi Longstocking. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I That's love that Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> I have a little bit of a throwback. Yeah. I had one of my friend's dads worked tangentially for Disney, so I think they had a lot of their movies. Oh, nice. All right, so Suleiman, um, would it be all right if uh, we, um, once we complete the, the current ship move, if we hold and maybe look for a place to grab a rock? Yes, sure. Yeah, this might be one of these uh, grab a rock every waypoint kind of dives. Roger that. Okay. Cool, thank you. So I think I am seeing some choice rubble around here. Choice. Right. Talus, if you want I was going to gonna say, technical. we don't call it rubble. That's uh, right. We don't call it debris. Talus. You're I've talking to somebody who gets covered in manganese every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll vouch that she's talking about her entire face and arms. <laughs> yeah. No, I walked into the bathroom last night to clean up, and I just had like a beard going. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep sea face mask. <laughs> With all those lovely heavy metals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So good for you. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere people would pay big bucks for that. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 you don't no. want that kind of heavy metal getting in your system. It's um, that's that's why I go and wash it off pretty quick. Um, because yeah, you just don't want to ingest that because it does build up over time, and heavy metal poisoning is definitely a thing. Oof, so it, you have to be mindful of that. What was that red thing to the right? I think these are all anemones out here. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Are you looking for the hopeful Chana Clops you? Yes, <laughs> you've got me going now. I know. Giant Chana Cops. But yeah. Okay. That sounds like a deep sea horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> Until they see it and then they're like, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and then it extends its jaws out and, and it takes you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris is over here keeping us grounded. <laughs> <laughs> probably not that different than managing his classroom sometimes. <laughs> oh, it's hurting cats right there. <laughs> Those do have really big bases. I could see mm -hmm. that one that was all flattened. Now I This rock has eyeballs. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I thought those were googly the lasers. eyes on the rocks. <laughs> oh my god, they do kind of look like lasers. <laughs> I didn't have to bring googly eyes at all. It was a good thing I left them in my office Get at the work. lasers onto the eyeballs. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Let's see, can we do it? Can You're do so it? close. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Pilot. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, 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 green pupils, come on. This come is on. a test of pilot skill. Oh. Oh. You're oh. so close. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How far apart do you think those eyeballs are? 10 centimeters. That is exactly 10 centimeters. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Are they limb? Oh, they're barnacles. barnacles. Wait, are those uh, yeah. like coral bases? No, they're just, I think, wide barnacles. Really? Okay. <laughs> they got their own pupils already. They oh had my like gosh. double pupils. <laughs> <laughs> Can you clip that? <laughs> the rocks have eyes. The rocks have eyes. That's another horror movie. Yeah. All right, cool, all right, please. Well, that was our fun for the day. <laughs> now back to work. Kelly thinks balanoid barnacles, maybe. Yeah, they look like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfectly apart. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, See, just because we're, cause we're here in the day doesn't mean we can't still be the nocturnals. Yeah. <laughs> Our mentality is perpetually midnight nocturnal. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Are those more uh, hemichorallium, some of those? Mm -mm. Not that I can see yet. Oh, the bottom left. There's a small pink one. Bottom oh, yeah, there. it's kind of oh, flopped yeah. down. This guy just kind of taking a yeah. nap over here. <laughs> it's a euphemism, isn't it? <laughs> I think he's the still standing, are, actually. The bamboos are getting tall. Look how thick the whip bamboos are back yeah. there. Yeah. 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 I think, according to Asako, maybe we could call that a, a bamboo forest. Oh, oh yeah, because cool. oh, yeah. it's a single species mostly. It really looks like like the little the confectionery world in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like you could just walk around and be in this whimsical, I don't know, candy world. Just don't take bites out of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably doesn't taste so good. <laughs> I mean, if uh, Hat Beard out on the back deck is any indication. <laughs> Are you still looking for rocks? There's yes, some, I am. There's some Lucy's right down there. Yeah, I think we're going to pass over that, though, so I'm looking oh. forward a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm just keeping an eye so we can give the pilots enough warning to uh, get set up. But also, I want to make sure we don't have to make any big moves. Are you looking for blocky or more crusty? Uh, blocky. Let's see if we can find us a nice pillow fragment. So Christopher, as a science communication fellow, what time did you get up today to do an oh, interaction? Actually, it wasn't that early. It was uh, 3:45. <laughs> okay, that's there was there was one scheduled later. at 2:30 this Ooh, morning fish. with someone from the UK. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That one looked cool. Oh, yeah, Shelby there. did that one. Yeah. She's, she said she really enjoyed it. Wow, that's a cool shot. That is. Pull wide, please. Sorry. Is that a little parasite or injury on it? That oh, white maybe. part? Maybe. Okay, this looks like there's some good rubble here. Yes, I'm using rubble. Maybe that might be a good place to try it for a grab if we've got um, the tether for it. I think ROB is chit chatting about uh, yeah. an issue. That is A OK. -okay. I think we've got uh, plenty Let's to pick from around position here. Now. Yeah. Roger. Uh, some of those. Uh, those are a little big. I can push ahead. It looks like there's over to the right there some uh, yeah. interesting piles. Agreed. Does uh, that looks promising? Yeah, I think those look good. You like these over here? I like them. Roger. Oh, do you mind if I kick ahead to that pile of rocks up there? Um, yeah, just up here? Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, great. Looks like there's plenty of space to set down, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some of these look pretty glued in as well, but I'm seeing some stuff that looks pretty loose, so we'll, uh, we'll poke around and see what we can grab. Roger that. Okay. That one might be, depending on how big it is, that might be something. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Did you miss me? Yes. We missed you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to be back. <laughs> now we're whole. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, how can you tell the difference between whip corals and bamboo corals? Um, whip is just the unbranching morphology so a whip bamboo is just a bamboo coral that doesn't have any branches that's a good size i think that might be in there we'll see kylie can give it a poke. yeah we'll see pull wide please you may be right about that but um yeah let's touch stuff <laughs> is that angular enough for you val yeah Okay. It looks like a pillow fragment. Oh, oh it nice. is loose. Sweet. Okay. Push on in there, babe. All right. That looks like a lovely sample. Let's get there. 
Do you want it a little far back, Kylie, so you can see Yes. That? Could you come back? Yeah, thank you. That's good. This is going to go in the starboard bio, I'm imagining. Yes. Uh, the yeah, only man. taken one is A. Hold on. Let me just change my grip force. Roger that. Uh, open your fingers. So just to give you a sense of how difficult this is, that what Kylie's doing, she's looking Ooh, at nice. a flat screen uh, and then trying to get a sense of depth. Video zoom. It's a lot of uh, using the shadow to figure out where I am. Is that too flat? It is a little flat now that we've picked it up, isn't it? Yeah, it's too flat. That makes me think Looks it'll like yeah, it might be all crust. crust. Crust yes. up crust. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can try something else. Yeah. We'll okay, come on. It looked really good at first. <laughs> I love that we know what you want. I yeah. was like, that's not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we there. check things out. She puts it perfectly it back. Looks yeah. Very nice. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, let's see if we got some other candidates here. Um, Wait, what about, do you think that guy's solid over this there? one? There. I was thinking too like, big. Oh, that stuff's what all solid guys? right yeah, there. Yeah, I think yeah. it might be attached. I we can poke attached. it. attached. Let's touch it. <laughs> that one looks loose, don't you think? Uh, oh, I think it's attached say. in the back. It's out of oh, reach, actually. <laughs> it's like a couple <laughs> inches away. Yeah. <laughs> hey, back up. So I see a target coming up on sonar. So uh, just as we go. I'll away. just hop a little bit forward, okay? Okay. Let me know when you're ready, Kaylee. All right, well, one second. You can leave it out if you want. You'll, leave you'll it. use it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that there. All good? Yes. Roger, Roger. Okay, I'm full wide. Oh, there's some big sponges coming up in um, Atlanta. Oh, yeah, just little ghosts right now. Yeah. All right. Some of those look like pillow fragments from the top, and then we pick them up, and they end up being a little bit on the uh, flat, kind of pancakey side. And what we've been seeing uh, when we've brought a couple of those on deck and cut them open is that um, those are actually uh, what look like bits of uh, manganese crust that have flaked off of one of the rocks, and then they've grown uh, nucleated more manganese crust on top of them. So there's not actually um, like an igneous rock in some of those. It's just a whole bunch of manganese crust. So uh, we're looking for something that's a little bit more uh, round and not so pancakey, because that'll that'll uh, uh, almost certainly uh, guarantee that there's a rock in the gooey core of our uh, little uh, little rock rolls or little rock surprises. How about this roundy kind of guy there? Um, which one are you looking at? Is the big? That yeah, one's a little that's big. It's pretty big. But maybe maybe that one. Um, oh yeah, those those might have some promise too. Okay. Yeah. We're at a we're at a good a spot now. Oh, that one that one maybe. Is maybe. the uh, telescope turned on so the audience can see where we're circling? Oh, I love this keyboard. Instead of typing yes. assault, I typed the alt. Was that a yes, Rhett? That is a yes. Can you tell us straight one more time as to which one you'd like us to try first? Uh, how about we try the one right below the manipulators here? Sure. We'll see if that uh, is not a flat rock. Oops. Oh, looks I think it's going to be flat. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> a pancake right there. Okay, so. What about yeah, this let's, one let's in the corner? That one yeah, in the corner? The one yeah, the corner let's give that a try. pointed that out earlier. Yeah. Let me... Oh, nice grab. Thank you. Is it too small? Yeah, is it? Um, I don't think so. Okay. What is it? Uh, in, are we in lasers? I can only see one laser. I'm trying to 
I'm trying to find Oh, them. okay, it's pretty small. It's, it's like, like 10, 10 centimeters. centimeters. Okay, how do you feel about that? Video, can you zoom? I'm okay with that. Okay. She's uh, tired of trying to cut rocks too big for the saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good size. Uh, looks like a pillow fragment. Beautiful. You like it? I love it. Oh, sweet. Okay, uh, you said starboard A? Uh, starboard A is taken, so oh. starboard B. Starboard Bravo, Roger. Uh, come wide. I gotta say the uh, addition of that saw on board has really increased the amount that you can do ahead of time before hitting land. For better or for yeah. worse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Means putting in the hours here on the ship, but it does streamline a lot of things uh, later on as far as uh, sample work, and I can uh, prioritize some samples that um, we think will be of uh, geochemical and geochronological interest on the ship and get those uh, uh, get those over to uh, the labs uh, doing some work on these that much faster. And then we archive a bunch of material too. So if um, it turns out that I'm wrong about something, uh, we can we can request uh, other samples or we can get more of those samples if we need. Yeah. And goes, others can work on them. Which goes a long way because collecting each sample takes a lot of work. A it lot does. Of time just to get out here. Yep. Nice. Thanks. Very nice. Come here. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Fitness. I had a question about how we choose our path um, as we go on a dive. I know we have waypoints, but how do we choose like what path to take from one waypoint to the next? Um, so choosing that path, uh, it, it kind of depends on what we're seeing. Uh, in the area too, Hi. so sometimes um, you know sometimes it's it's more interesting to uh, go directly point to point because of what we're surveying. Other times Thanks. it might be interesting to look along the sides of some of the steeper ridges that we've been on where we're seeing a lot of life. Sometimes we want to see what's on uh, both sides of these two to try to get an understanding of the current and how that um, might have a relationship with the uh, communities that we're seeing. So it's it's a little bit. Um, Context dependent. Changed my head. And don't all of you, as lead scientists, Roger. sort of confer and come, just kind of figure out what hits the most goals of. Um, that's that's for planning the initial tracks. Yeah. Uh, so when planning the actual um, general routes that we're, follow that we're following our, uh, uh, prior to going down, um, we've been uh, selecting for. Um, uh, ridges where we're likely to see uh, both good rock exposures and um, a variety of different kinds of organisms. So, um, you know, those those are those are picked to try to give us uh, the best kind of cover, like multidisciplinary survey coverage that that we can. Big big sponge in the Atlantic Ham. Yeah. And uh, Chris Kelly, one of our onshore scientists, and, uh, one of our uh, onshore co-leads, has been uh, instrumental in helping us plan some of those routes, too, because he's been doing this for uh, quite a while. And um, he, he has a pretty good sense of uh, where, uh, you know, where we'll be able to uh, uh, have really productive uh, surveys. All right, Sullivan, we're ready for our next move. Okay, so we'll be going to north, zero, zero, zero. Due north, zero, zero, zero. All right. Uh, we'll be going towards uh, waypoint four, right? Yes. Okay. Ready for it? Yep. And, oh, actually, go ahead. Press this is nav. Can we move uh, the ship on bearing zero, zero, zero north, 50 meters? So on this dive track, uh, we, areas down a little. we were on a gentler slope and then we hit kind of a flat area right before we hit our third waypoint. And now that we're starting to move on uh, directly toward our fourth waypoint, uh, we're going to see the uh, we're going to see the, uh, the grade of the slope start picking up. And uh, with that, we're going to see some changes because uh, here we're seeing uh, uh, less of the tallest that kind of built up at the bottom of the slope. We're seeing much more. Um, uh, lava that's in place, and uh, that that means that the substrate 
changes a little bit for uh, uh, as far as uh, what sort of uh, and, and that that could have an effect on uh, uh, the kinds of communities and population densities that we're seeing. And I think we're already very much seeing that change. Yeah. Data Lab, this is Data. So again, we are diving on the Argonaut Sea Mount in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. We are way at the kind of edge Lounge of the expansion data. boundary area, the northern side. Um, Lounge data. And I'd have to take another look, but we're probably somewhere north of uh, Kamole, also known as Laysan Island. Somewhere right around there, but straight north toward the boundary at the Lilikalani Seamounts. Yeah, ridges. go ahead. Thank you. Wow, that's really thick. Mm. Those barnacles. Yeah. It looks like streams like flowing off the. Yeah, totally. The rock. I was just thinking that. It is really evocative of that. It, it totally gives us sense of motion. I think a poetry right here, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Ah, there's, it's so extensive. You can see it going all the way up back here along the flow, and you can even see it back here, too. We didn't see a big batch of shell hash in front of this rock like we did in front of the other one. It's yeah, kind of interesting. It looks like it doesn't have the same kind of uh, flat area to accumulate, mm. um, kind of the way some of those spots lower down did. Wow. This must have been dramatic because this was all happening. Oh, yeah. That's oh, so yeah. cool. I'm seeing some sponges. Uh, they, they went off the right side of the screen, but there's one of those stocked sponges again. And the corals are a lot smaller here again, too. Ooh, big black coral in the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's huge. Over on the left side of the screen for the viewers. So the current's actually picking up here a little bit. Okay. Which is interesting. You don't really see it in the marine snow. Is the current uh, head on to Hercules? No, it was just kind of pushing us to the side. Okay. So, so for some of those moves, I wasn't actually thrusting at all. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah, I'm seeing a little polishing on some of the uh, manganese crusts, too. Such an interesting area. It seems like it's changing directions in different places. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's great. Christmas tree bathopathies. <laughs> I'll do it one more time. There we go. That is a big black coral. Yeah. Got any more tighter zoom there? So cool. there you can see the polyps look super spiky on black coral. Is that one of their diagnostic features? At least when I'm looking at it. <laughs> All right, pull wide, please. Uh, Jess, Chris is asking for an estimate on uh, the direction of the current. Do you have like a rough general azimuth on that? Um, yeah, how about we pick up and see where we get pushed, yeah? Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, sure thing. Myself squared up here. So interesting that the black coral and like a, a fern on land have almost exactly the same shape. But oh, they're in yeah. completely different environments, doing completely different things. Seems to be an efficient form to offer as much surface area to whatever you're trying to connect yeah. to, whether it's sunlight or feeding. Yeah. It's 
It's kind of like a northwest. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, like probably 300 or so. 300, thank you. So for those of you that have been noticing some video issues, we are aware of those. Uh, they're not happening on ship. They're it's with the satellite. Yeah, on the satellite end of things. And they are in the process of trying to solve those. Thank you for your patience. OK, so that kind of explains the distribution of the barnacles then. Uh, so they're, they're facing the current. Oh. And uh, it looks like the corals are pretty well aligned with that too for the most part. I think coming from the northwest, right? Uh, uh, pushing us to the northwest. To the northwest, okay. Yeah. Mm, not pushing, pushing. I cannot type today. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting all pushed around over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of curious. So we're getting pushed to the northwest, or does that mean the northwest is pulling us to? The uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Attempted a really bad joke. Too early. <laughs> <Poor setup. laughs> Need that 4 a.m. shift yeah. right there, right? <laughs> yeah, I went to bed before midnight. It was remarkable. Maui. And I slept most of that, too, which is even more remarkable. Much more sparse Thank you. This area. I'm so. back. I'm back, 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 back again. Welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> all right. We will all now wake up a bit. <laughs> the ball of energy has entered the building. <laughs> She's always been in this building. In corner. <laughs> oh, this is a cool landscape. Yeah. Uh, we, can, we can actually do another 50 since it'll be flat for another minute. Sounds good. Thanks, Lamont. We are about five hours into a planned 16 hour dive. Argonaut is a smaller seamount. I think that'll probably be our last 50. Of course, sorry to Thank tell you. our nocturnal fans that. Um, <laughs> we'll be coming out of the water before our midnight watch. Yeah. Will we? We uh, should we should be on deck by midnight, I believe. Oh, yeah. Raj, Sounds we'll good. be Thank on you. deck for our recovery. Yep. Yeah. I will be ready with the rock buckets. Ready so. with the rock buckets. We'll all, we'll all be there uh, uh, fishing a robot out of the water instead of up here in the control van. Woohoo! What time is our next dive tour? Um, I don't know if I saw that. That's a good question. I think we were talking about a rather rapid turnaround, but I don't know if that's confirmed yet. Um, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> pre dive post dive pre dive Oh, my God. Uh, I will let you know as soon as I yeah. know more. Uh, the next dive is on Nootka, Simon, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Pretty Which we're pretty close, close. to. Yeah. yeah, it'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got something big in the corner here. Oh, yeah. Sponge. Oh, yeah, you can see it in Atlanta. Uh, Chris Kelly is curious about the current direction and how it changes in this area. So, um, yeah, I think uh, he, he's, he's curious to have us check the drift uh, periodically to see if that uh, changes. Sure thing. Cool. Thank you. What is this long? Is this a it's dead like a stock of something? Or is it attached to something? Good. Whoa, that's wow. that that is is a huge long question. Stock. I wish we saw what had that stock. <laughs> <laughs> is this the same thing we just sampled yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Was that yesterday? I think, I think so. so. <laughs> was it two days ago? <laughs> Wait, it was within the week. <laughs> I remember that this is this was the one that was uh, a special a one. tricky. Yeah. Yeah. But we got a good piece. That stock is what, like two and a half meters? Something like that, yeah. 
Go ahead and push on in again, please. Practically make that an extra tether for her. That's awesome. <laughs> You want to come partial wide? Uh, yeah, See another parade. Great. And then I'll look down at the little guy. The big guy, I mean. <laughs> long, long guy. Lanky guy. Little big guy. Is this a precursor <laughs> of what we're going to see uphill, I wonder? Oh, we hope so. I oh, know, right? That would it be just amazing. goes on and on. What do you okay. think, like two and a half meters? Yeah, because that's not even the end of it. Like, it goes off screen further. So lasers are on it now, so. Yeah, but we're, we don't even see all of it right now. Yes, you do. No, it goes further off to the right. Does um, it? Oh, behind that rock? Yeah. Raj. I guess like two meters. That is a long sponge. Yeah. I don't think we've seen anything quite that tall. All right, pull that off and come it up all. a little bit. Raj. Got a little slope in my sonar. Little float in the sonar, Raj. <laughs> I hate sloping sonar. <laughs> oh, slope. I say you said float. I was like, well, I don't know. And you're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Raj. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask her what she meant later. <laughs> Fair. Oh, wow, there's another right. stock. Oh, yeah. Well, we definitely got something interesting coming up. Oh. Drum roll. The anticipation grows. <laughs> Starting to see a couple more of these uh, kind of squat sponges. More yeah. dead stuff. So we're moving up this slope. Sorry. That looks like a roselli base sponge in the back. And then the lettuce sponges don't know which. <laughs> It's funny how the pan and Ooh, tilt like keeps on drifting stock. this way. Mm. <laughs> there's one of the stocks that's vertical. Right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Let's go look. Is that another wow, stock? Wow, that one's standing. Could be bamboo coral, too, but. We seem to be out of the bamboos looks, here, though. It, it looks are, thick. Yeah. It looks more stocky, doesn't it? Uh -uh. Looks like it doesn't have a head. Yeah. Yeah. And there isn't like any decaying head nearby. So just is leaving us wondering. Might have got flown away in the current. <laughs> so morbid. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you literally lose your head and it floats away from you. This really is our horror movie. Oh, there's uh, one with a head attached in the back. Oh, yeah. Smaller. Look, there's another right there on the ground. You see one attached? Yeah, right. Oh, you think that's right the there. Yeah, there you go. Maybe. Huh. Neat. Yeah, definitely a huh. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Hey, one of my favorite things to say as a scientist Could have is. Push on impartial there. Huh, that's funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> that usually means that there's something really cool going on. Uh, there's some research to be done there. Keeps us employed. Mm. Keeps us employed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead and come a little wide there. Yeah, you can see some uh, structure inside of the stock. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have a way to age these sponges, do we? I don't know. Let Chris take that one. So do you think it was this puffy thing, puffy sponge here? That possible, although those stalks are so straight, I can't tell how straight this sponge stalk looks. Raj. I don't. And it's part of that problem that uh, uh, Chris and a couple others were talking about. I think Chris and Asako, a dive or two ago, where mm -hmm. um, come up a little. Sure thing. We Go aren't always shown in there, bit please. Yeah, we aren't always sure what mm. like juvenile and more mature forms look like, and it can yeah. be difficult to tell if they're the same species or if they're uh, uh, two completely different things just based on observation alone can't see the back, but I think it's probably called Vegas. Yeah, uh, Chris, Chris is confirming. Agrees. Okay, sweet. It doesn't look like the same stock, does it? No, no it doesn't. Really. Huh. We'll see what we see. Yeah. Pull wide, please. You want to come pull wide for one more moment there? 
part. Do you mind coming full wide for one more moment? Uh, oh. It is. Oh, right. Oh, Chris oh. was wondering if we could zoom on the um, spun behind it. Yeah, the one on the ground. I yeah. think this one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you. Sorry, we're at the, we know that the pan and tilt when we go left starts to drift on its own. <laughs> so that's why I was, um, I need to check my orientation more often now. <laughs> Thanks. I tried. cluster of corals around here too. This must be a good feeding spot. And just a little bit of channelization uh, happening in this in this space uh, around here, so it must be concentrating some nutrients. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Got a little bit of slope in my sonar. Roger that. So Chris was guessing from looking it at it from afar that it was a Lanuginella species. Uh, oh, no, nope, you're changing your mind. You're redded. You're redded. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to head up. It's full Very light, pretty. Please. Very pretty bass bunch. Mm -hmm. I like those. A loofah. I like the texture, yeah. Yeah. Oh, loopy. Like the texture, do not like the smell. <laughs> you see those big fractures in the rock down there? Yeah. The lava has been breaking off. Aren't there some sponges that smell like cucumber? Isn't that cucumber? If there are, I haven't Ooh, met them yet. I haven't, but that sounds cool. I, I could have sworn Amanda was talking about... Um, a, a sponge expert was talking I mean, about... Amanda Khan? Yeah, yeah, about the smell of sponges and how they're so unique, and some of them smell really sweet. And There's the fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Diane would disagree in terms of drawing out that one fuzzy mm. sponge. <laughs> oh, God. Hatbeard is over by the rock saw on the back deck, and man, yes, <laughs> that thing is powerful. <laughs> powerful? <laughs> <laughs> this is not. I'm being diplomatic. <laughs> Can we move to north 20 meters? Actually, I should have said it was you. Yeah, Diane's, <laughs> Diane's been taking care of it, but Belle's been smelling it. Go ahead push on there, please. <laughs> While we cut the rocks. I yeah. don't have the best angle for you guys, but hopefully you can ID this fish from it. Oops. All right, let me pull Is up that one of those ophitted fish? Let me I might need to go full wide, please. Also, the current has picked up here again. Things are going to hit some good corals, I think. Yeah, cool. I think that's one of those bathidity, one of the ophitted fish. Does it feel like about the same direction? Uh, let's have a good look. I'll get out a little. Oh, yeah, here. it has that head shape, doesn't it? I think so. I think that's a good call. So you have a question about what those uh, sponges smell like. <laughs> All different. All right. I'm going to take Difficult to describe. Cool. I was waiting for Val to say something. <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> what do sponges smell like? Powerful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, I can't really describe it. Wisdom. Like, they... <laughs> I think it's more just a westerly. Maybe, like, it's... 285, if any. 285? Okay, thanks. Yeah. We'll get that noted. It's kind of cool. Like a mild shift. I don't know about the deep sea sponges. I haven't worked with them, but the intertidal sponges near where I live have this kind of almost ammonia smell to them. Oh. Ooh. It's like a, it's really pungent. Huh. It's some metabolic product, I think. Terrain again. Yeah, we're getting into somewhere between pillow and low bait. 
close. Tiny little coral garden. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, uh, a melee or song written for Papahana Mokuakea, and in it there's a line, um, Kanaloa Haunavela, and the way that my colleague was trying to explain the translation of Haunavela, her Haunavela was like this powerful stench, but it was a, a positive thing. It kind of expressed strength and power, if I remember correctly. But that came to mind as we we're having that smell conversation. Mm. <laughs> That's an interesting connection there. Yeah, my uh, I grew up in Northern California, and going to the beaches there, the bull kelp oh, cool would be on the. Bridge, this is Nav. Another move, same step, north. 20 meters. The book help would be rep rotting out on the beach, and to me, actually, it's a really evocative, positive smell <laughs> of home. Yeah, smell is very strongly tied to memory in a lot of cases. Mean very different things to different people. You know what smell I like? It brings back memories. What? Like the random one? Is like the smell of like those big fat crayons when you're like <laughs> in in early elementary school classes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That always makes me like smell my my elementary school again. <laughs> huh. it's Go ahead. Oh, I was about to say, it's just curious that we can't recreate those smells yeah. in our memory until we have to like re-smell it to mm -hmm. have those memories be unlocked. Yeah. Very much so. Val just pointed out a really thick, not the one of those fallen stalks. Yeah, to the lower right. Yeah. yeah. We want to see one of them whole. Right? There are like all these small ones too. These are all also stalks. These are not bamboo coral. They're all headless. We saw some stuff like that on previous dives where we had uh, different, very different species of sponge, but uh, a bunch of those skeletons, and we didn't see a whole lot of those that were alive. No, that was when, yeah, we had like that Walteria graveyard at the bottom of that slope. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know till we uh, take and a look. Sponges of times past. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's just, a, I shouldn't say just, but that is a sponge, yeah. I was like, octopus for just a second. <laughs> <laughs> more, whoa, a lot more stalks coming up in the back. So yeah. many. Oh my gosh. This must have been so cool. It kind of reminds me, uh, way back in college, we took a geology field trip to Mount St. Helens. Oh, yeah. wow. lucky. The, they've been letting the area basically recover on its own for the mo most part, so they you know, can study mm -hmm. that. And all of the fir trees in the blast zone look like somebody took a comb and just combed them all oh, down their hairs, yeah. like all yeah. from, you know, laid out in the same direction as the force of the blast. This is reminding me of that for some weird reason. Makes some sense, because yeah, it takes a while for I mean, it takes a while for trees to uh, become large trees again, and uh, yeah, that. Um, that evidence is going to stick around for a long time. Because it was only 1980 or 1981 when it Yeah, erupted. 1980. 1980. Hey everyone, this is Steve. I'm over here on the side table. I'm going to be doing some photos and video. So, just just so you know, just wanted to warn you. All right. Warn. Oh yeah. God. You know, if you uh -oh. wanna if you wanna throw in some extra points and oohs and ahs and you know, <laughs> chat it up. Oh, we are being observed. Should we stop For, talking about it's gonna be mostly the back row, so fine. Cool, thanks. <laughs> Look at this cool base sponge right there. Oh yeah. We are being observed. Are we going to behave naturally? <laughs> That's always no, the question. Never. With, uh, observations, right? Two more of those stalks. I wonder if we're gonna see anything. They're huge. Still up. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really wondering if we will see a living know. version of any of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm so curious. You know, for as tall as they are, look at what's left of the, the base, the whole kind of the hold fast. It's so small. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm almost wondering if these are near in place. You know, 
it would be hard for them to tumble down long distances and still have a complete stock, but it looks like that might have been a weak point uh, where presumably the uh, the head of the sponge was attached. Which maybe Do yeah. sponge have heads? Uh, I would call that a head. Please, okay. Let it settle out for I don't know if that was the appropriate term. I don't know if that's an appropriate term. <laughs> that's always what I call yeah, those, the head of the okay. colobacus. So should gotcha. we? Gotcha. Maybe like three minutes or so. Is it the current uh, drifting you away? Yeah. Okay. One yeah, so the current is going pretty left here for this layback. I see. Because you were almost... I think that's depleted. Yeah. There's a piece in here if you want it. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Steve, Appreciate we have a question it. for you. Did you get any whale shark pics? Oh, my gosh. Clips with the Go GoPro underwater. Nice. And they're really good. That's you did great. a great job. Oh, I want to see those. That was a nice bonus today. That was today? Yeah. There was a whale shark? There was a whale oh. shark. Oh, you didn't hear it? No. So that for yeah. first like hours swimming around the boat. Well, what? Both of us slept through yeah. it. Yeah. <gasps> no. Yeah. Oh, I'm heartbroken. Cool. There's a bunch of pictures up on the Instagram account. Right. Mm. And they are so beautiful. I'm so jealous. Yeah. Those are awesome. Check it out. He put, he's, uh, you edited together a bit of footage, didn't you, Whoa, Steve? Whoa, what? Are you kidding me? <gasps> oh, man. I know. All right, and as we, uh, as we are anticipating, the uh, slope is picking up over here. So we're seeing uh, less tallest. Um, Less tall stuff, too. Less tallest and less tall stuff. <laughs> Betcha. Not tallest. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hey, I sw Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry, <guys. laughs> um, so for these, since we have a westerly uh, current pushing, as you can kind of see on the Rob nav screen, um, we're getting, the vehicles are going to be pushed west for this current. Uh, so we're thinking that we're going to aim for the western side, coming up the western side of this slope here, so that if we get pushed by the current, we push Argus into deeper water. Just uh, heads up for you guys. Sure. Yep, let's let's go with that. We don't need to go bouncing off of anything. Please, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little stressful. <laughs> a lot stressful. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how long it'll take them to process that video but I'm sure it's a highlight they'll want to get up on online as soon as they can but we just got the video this morning so yeah yeah Steve got some amazing footage of that uh, 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 whale shark is it just the stills that made it up to Instagram I, that's what I saw so yeah I don't know about the video yet What GoPro was that? The resolution was so good. I think it's Dan's. Probably Dan's. Oh, okay. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> I, saw, I saw you guys <laughs> doing that. It worked out really well. All right. Heavy yeah, barnacles again. Great footage. You also get some pretty good audio of the uh, dynamic, posi uh, dynamic positioning system doing its job. Uh huh. Oh, there's a sea star. The <laughs> new audio <laughs> of the DV doing its job. <laughs> Why? Because it's loud. I did see. Um, okay. You can see the yeah. the USBL down Three out of out of the moon pool poking out. Pressure. This is now. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah, looks weird. Next move. <laughs> Three, four, five, twenty meters. Yeah, we don't really ever get to see the uh, the underside of the ship that we're living on, so um, it's a very different perspective than we're used to. I think what I like about these barnacles is it really accentuates the form of the of the rock. It really does, doesn't that it? Sometimes it gets lost just kind of in the yeah. shadow and the mm. darkness. Yeah, they like some of the more vertical surfaces and maybe some of the uh, crevices. Am I seeing that right? They definitely like the most vertical parts of the rock. You want to push in? Oh, never mind. Sorry, I went a little too fast there. The shiny bits are cool. You want to push in the slight partial there? That's great. 
Oh yeah. You want Put it on? a little, uh, tiny little squat lobster. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm, just a little guy. Just. Cal Cal Wait, you want porch on? Yeah, sure. These Chrysogorgia are pretty tough. They seem to be consistent, consistently spread about. Yeah. These are different now than the ones, I think these are more like fan shaped and we were seeing more of the bottle brush earlier. Oh, I think this is <coughs> crisis maybe, Chrysogorgia crisis. I changed my heading. Raj. Just a wee bit. Raj at that. Like zigzagging. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can That's see the westerly just... current and the teeny little bits of marine snow we're seeing here and there. So to keep the vehicles <laughs> safe, we're going to be uh, favoring the western sides of the slopes just in, uh, just in case we get blown around a little bit. So nice safety measure there. So we are on Argonaut Sea Mount on the eastern fork of the Lulukalani Ridge. We're at 2,072 meters or so. On the northern kind of edge of the expanded boundary area of Papahānau Mokuākea Marine National Monument. We're pretty far north along the chain. Um, I'd have to go back and double check on the map, but I think we're kind of straight up north from Kamole, which is also known as uh, Leisan, and Kamoku o Kamoho Lihi, which is also known as Merrow Reef. Somewhere right around there, but north. Let's go pull up some bathymetry for you. I wonder what makes the barnacles so abundant here when we have hardly seen them at some of the other similar areas. Yeah, I'm, that's a great question, I think, because uh, the rock doesn't seem that different from some of the other dives. And here we go. I believe this is right about where we are. Yeah. Can't really overlay it with the boundary, but. And yeah, we're just due north of this atoll here. We'll do another one. Ah, Kawo, okay. which is the uh, okay, good. more contemporary Hawaiian name. Praise this is now. For Leisan or Kamole. Good call. Four, five. Three, four, five. 20 meters. So got uh, some interesting history to it. Yeah. Different terracing levels. Uh, it looks like some submarine canyons to the north. And a hypersaline lake in the middle of that small little yeah, coral Yeah, I mentioned that the other yeah. day. The, the uh, endemic Laysan duck makes its home there and uh, runs along the edge of the hypersaline lake to stir up the brine flies and just open it wide. Wow. There also are a lot of other animals that depend on that small little island, of course. <laughs> now that's your flow indicator. Chris Kelly, for if you're watching that. He's actually on uh, Puppy Watch right now. Oh, right. So they're off for a walk, but he'll be back later. Deep sea treadmill. Is this like right along the toe or the edge? There's just this. Like, why are there so many Chrysogorgia there? Ooh, I don't along know. Oh, you're talking well, about like right along yeah, the side? Yeah, there's just like yeah. the whole row of them. It just must That's be a good the right observation. spot. The, these are bigger too. They've been around for a little longer. Ooh, Ooh. and some bigger primnoids. All right, we've entered back into good feeding grounds or something. Yeah, it looks like they're uh, taking advantage of the forcing. Uh, that, that the steeper slope might be uh, uh, um, doing. It might be, you know, you're, you're getting that current uh, forced up over the steeper slope is what I'm trying to say. Kind of the, is that like the upwelling? Yeah, I think we've been seeing this on uh, other 
uh, other dives pretty frequently. Yeah, it's not so much upwelling, it's more like advection. So uh, you have the, whatever the prevailing current is around here and um, it, it's forced to follow the, uh, uh, the bathymetry uphill. So I don't know if that has some sort of a concentrating effect or not. Mm. Okay. Or if it like, you know, sort of speeds it up or something. I'm, I'm thinking of it uh, in terms of like, you know, it's very similar to how air currents behave as they're uh, blown over mountain ranges. Just more viscous. Asako was po pointing out uh, sort of as a question or observation if uh, everything was sort of pointing the same direction, trying to catch that current mm -hmm. oriented toward the same direction. Yeah, and that can also give us an idea of uh, flow direction too, looking at uh, uh, how the fans, uh, how the fanned corals um, have oriented themselves. Uh, primnoid and hemichorallium here is what Asako is saying. As With well a few bamboos, bamboos thrown in for fun. <laughs> yep. There's definitely more polishing on the rocks. Yeah. Uh, might be a little tinafor in the Atlantic cam. Uh, maybe just about. Well, no, because it, it bobbed for a second there as I as the yeah. See, there is back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I might lose it again now though, but. Been good for another move. Yes, please. With the heave of the ship. Press this is enough. Another move. Same step. Some star pathies again, maybe. They do have that sort of fleshier look that I yeah. was noticing on that. Although sometimes it's hard to tell because it looks like there's still like this central axis and the star pathies are more like branching. But yeah, I don't know that color and the fluffiness. Is it just me or the barnacles, whatever it is, picking up in uh, density too on this rock face? Yeah. I wonder if we're concentrating the current a little bit against the slope. Mm. This is getting back into some meteorology, so I'm trying to remember how exactly, um, what exactly happens with this forcing mechanism. It's been a, it's been a while. It really seems like there's a there's a current or something that goes from high to low just by the pattern of the barnacles, mm -hmm. the way they're distributed. <gasps> yes, I do. Oh, sorry, sorry. Barnacles start out as a free-swimming larva called a, a nauplius, I think, and uh, they swim around for a while. And then they find a spot on a rock and they settle head down and they stick their head to the rock and live upside down the rest of their life. Just gonna go eat with their feet or foot. I'm kind of glad I don't eat with my feet. <laughs> it kind of it looks it ends up looking like a like a fan, yeah. a siri. Really long toes. <laughs> like, can you imagine just like tasting your socks all the time? Ugh. No, I would love not to imagine. Way to take it there. <laughs> oh, I went there. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm about to pop off and do an interaction for a bit. All right, and Diane will that. take over. Bye. Oh, nice. Bye. Bye. How are you doing? The oh, Diane's taking over. Awesome. Oop. Because Leela does a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yep, as uh, the main corraller of ship's data on this expedition, she's got to stay on top of everything. That is a uh, an extremely busy job. Oh, what do we have here in the middle here? This little guy. It's just kind of swimming around. Yeah. Uh, the swimmer? That it's got swept by the current. Oh, yeah. Raj. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so it would have been really hard for us to catch. We're looking for another one of those sea dandelions, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. That was one of my favorite sights of Just, this yeah. cruise so far. Sitting there, tooting its little horns. It's one of the best names, because all those little filaments that were kicking off are exactly yeah. like blowing on the seed head of a dandelion. Like, yeah. species like that are just so alien. They're, they're so functionally different from, you know, the world that we exist in on the surface here. Have fun with your interaction. Mm. So
So as everybody's probably heard before on here, we, we uh, offer ship to shore interactions for classes and groups. And all of these science communication fellows are the leads on that. And you guys have done how many now? Uh, Close to 60, 60 something. 60 something, I think, yeah. We have 11 scheduled today. Wow, wow. that's so many. So this is not. And the rest of us try to sit on there as we can. It's really system. fun to to hang out with uh, all of all different ages of, of groups. There's another little somebody oh, right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Shelby even got up at two thirty in the morning to talk to a <laughs> group of students from the UK. That was a very early start. Or very late. Go ahead and push on in a bit. Oh, just kidding. Oh, I'm coming right at us. <laughs> Don't do that, friend. Oh, I please. I got to do a sign language interaction today with some students at a uh, program for deaf kids in a public school. That was pretty neat. What'd you guys talk about? Um, well, I kind of gave the rundown of what we do on uh, Nautilus and some of our seafloor exploration. Um, they were really interested in sharks. <laughs> uh, wanted to know about oh, yeah. uh, what sharks we've seen. And that was before I found out that we had a whale shark swimming around the <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. this morning. So close. So. Yeah. And, and something yeah. I really uh, appreciate about uh, being part of the team here is as with with Christopher's ASL skills, we were he was bringing up some, some improvements that needed to be made such as when we're showing pictures they'd still need to be able to see you yeah so, so we got a picture in picture, picture ability in. on our our interface and that works well yeah. and then Malana and Ipo have been doing some uh, interactions in Lolo Hawaii or Hawaiian as well yeah yeah, Chris and I got to do one this morning, too. That was fun. Yeah. That was your school My back school in, New in New Hampshire, is that correct? Yeah, that was a third grade class from the school where I teach. I'm a middle school teacher, but those will be my students in three years. Priming yeah. them now. Fantastic. So yep. Good to talk to them. They had a lot of good questions and were very excited. They were. It They're was really fun to talk to them. They were well behaved. Definitely and more excited than my own <laughs> students. <laughs> <laughs> they were so excited. Third and fourth grade are some of my favorite ages to work with because they're so sharp. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they had some great questions. They, they really, really do, did. Don't they? Yeah. yeah. But are still also in a little bit of that young innocence where they mm -hmm. they connect they glom onto you a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. One gal had a good question about pressure at the bottom of the ocean, which I thought was extremely astute. Yeah. For a little person her age. How did you describe it? Oh goodness. What did we say? Oh, Chris actually had his uh, cups that he sent down to uh, on Herc couple dives ago and so he could illustrate basically like what happens with pressure so he had the big cup the little cup and he could explain it so that was great teaching moment um yeah yeah, yeah we're getting some uh bigger corals here bunch it's of like more of that chrysogorgia yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that little black coral there these are a little taller than what we've been seeing most of the dives so far yeah we've seen little patches of these bigger corals here and there you know what we haven't seen, though? Those giant long stalks. I was hoping we'd run yeah. into an intact one. It makes me wonder if that's uh, just some old generation of something that was, uh, uh, you know, one of the, I guess part of the ecosystem balance and if something shifted again. It's, it's hard to say, though, given, you know, we can't, we don't really Looking have a good, good way right? to, like, Bridge, get this is not another museum step. Yeah, we don't really have a good way to establish an age for the corals or, you know, how old they are. So um, a lot of this is just right now trying to get a field, you know, a field based understanding of some of the relationships that we're seeing. So w what we're doing right now is pretty qualitative. Ooh, what's, what's, what's up that? above that us there? Legs. <laughs> oh, what did, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there were just like legs at the top of the monitor for a second. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed that. <laughs> 
a some sacros. sort of some sort of crustacean. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh. I was looking. I thought at it might have been a crinoid or something swimming. Asako was thinking that those uh, black corals we seen were saw were staropathy. Yeah, it's almost like a Chrysogorgia forest here, isn't it, Asako? It is. And it's all on that uh, that eastern slope uh -huh. where they're catching the uh, the current uh, moving from uh, roughly east to west. Possible primnoids over there too on the bottom left. And you can see that the barnacles really like that uh, that side of the ridge as well. Sheesh. Yeah, you're not kidding. Even though this is a, a seamount with a gentler slope along the ridge, we're still seeing quite the dichotomy between the east and the west sides, and uh, uh, that has everything to do with uh, the prevailing current around here from the looks of it. Yeah, that is striking, isn't it? It, it is. is all on that eastern side. And it looks like we are going to get a little bit steeper in our next few moves um, for a while. So uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not that population becomes uh, a little bit more dense even, or if uh, we see some other sort of change. So a question about um, whether a subsea quake or a tsunami might have knocked the stocks over. Um, so at these depths, a tsunami probably wouldn't be quote unquote felt uh, by the seamount here. Um, earthquake, maybe. I'm not sure how seismically active this part of the uh, this part of the uh, uh, oceanic crust is. It's pretty pretty quiet. Uh, this is this is uh, a region that's in the middle of the Pacific Plate, and. Uh, uh, the nearest source of earthquakes uh, to this area, uh, it, uh, consistently anyway, um, is probably the Hawaiian plume. Um, there, there's some stuff related to uh, uh, how the Hawaiian plume moves upward and creates a, uh, uh, a flexural bulge, as we call it, uh, around the plume. So it bends the crust, um, the oceanic crust that it's pushing up, uh, up on from below. Um, bends it upward, and you can get uh, uh, earthquakes related to um, basically uh, uh, fle that flexure. Uh, you can get a little bit related to settling oh, uh, is this the oceanic crust. Net? You can get a little bit related oh, to magma check movement that out. on rare occasions. Is that line? Is that yeah. line or net? I Looks think that's like. line, actually. Yeah, yeah, I think that line. is some line, yeah. yeah. Do we need to double check if there's anything stringing off of it? I don't see anything stringing off of it, but we're gonna zoom on it anyway. Okay. Go ahead we, and push on in, please. We've most most of the dives we've seen that. at least a little bit of marine debris. Yeah. 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 yeah I I've only seen it once. Seen. Luckily, only really small pieces like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. yeah. They, when they get tankled around the uh, Pull wide, please. corals as they move in the current, it can definitely kind of beat things up. We're gonna yeah. just take a quick glance this way. We are seeing, I don't see anything though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seeing quite a bit more of the, the bigger Chrysogorgia though. Yeah. Okay. Wow, right it there. unfolds before us. There, there is a, another possibility of some earthquakes occurring along some of the uh, fracture zones that run mm -hmm. through uh, the Pacific Plate. So um, there, there's some fairly extensive uh, fracture systems that help accommodate um, uh, the stresses within the plate. You can get some earthquakes along those occasionally, but they're not the kind of, um, it, it, they're earthquakes that come from side to side movements of the plates rather than uh, up and down. So um, those tend to move things a little bit differently. But yeah, it's a, it's always possible that you know, there could have been something that knocks some of the stocks over, yeah, so I'm that could have just been. I'll get up ahead of you a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I think it I've could just be the natural life cycle of the sponges too. Yeah. We've seen a lot of that. Yeah. Asako's making a good point here. She's saying because we've been seeing this type of view for the last few hours, uh, it may feel kind of more common, but we should just pinch ourselves and remember that this is incredible, incredible uh, habitat that we're seeing. This that is a forest. very good point. Yeah. I was paraphrasing it, there a little okay. bit. It is quite unlike. Uh, <laughs> been, have another step step. <laughs> quite unlike what we've been seeing uh, some of the other. Uh, some of the other dives, like this is very, very dense for corals from what I understand. 
So I've been I've been listening to the biologists uh, as much as possible on this. And, uh, this is a lot of corals. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of things on top of the rocks here, and it is very cool. <laughs> Interesting. We haven't seen the color variation that we saw in other places here either. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. There's a few more brighter. <laughs> but. Except for these black corals, yeah. quite vibrant. <clears throat> but yeah, the pinks haven't been quite as bright, and we haven't seen as many of the the kind of more yellowish corals. Or the, the purple Victor Gorgia. Yeah. Sako's calling those bathopathies. Yeah, the, the black coral course. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the uh, 2018 Kilauea eruption uh, okay. I can't remember how, how, what was the magnitude of the earthquake? 6.9. So 6 we 9. felt it in Honolulu. Yeah. I oh, had wow. A what do we have coming up? Sorry, Justin. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just saying, yeah, lots of, wow, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, but that was pretty intense uh, where you were. I was in Hilo, not that far away, and yeah. uh, upstairs in an old wooden building with about 60 fourth graders. <laughs> so definitely an adventure. Wow, it's definitely getting fuller, thicker again. <laughs> it's like a meadow. Yeah, I had a uh, colleague, one of the uh, uh, the Hawaii State Volcanologist, um, Thanks, was Ryan. out on site yep. when that earthquake happened. And he was very close to the epicenter, and they. Uh, they said it was hard to stay standing. Like wow. it, it was just shaking so badly uh, that you know, it was hard to keep your balance. Wow. Kind of getting thrown around. I believe it after I saw a lot of the cracks that opened up or fissures that opened up in yeah. the park. It was, it was intense. All right, so one of our onshore scientists uh, saying we should keep an eye out for secondary branching bathopathies around here. Okay. So if we spot one of those, uh, let's give a shout and see if we can get a closer look at that. Can you help me remember what that is? So that, this is, Bathy it's Bathy's a type of black yeah. coral. Okay. But this is not branching, I guess. So we're looking for one of those with multiple branches. Yes. Yep. Raj Raj. Is that a dead sponge there, lower left? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Dead Korea. The, your, your, whatever. Is it the one that begins with the EUR? Really <laughs> I think it's just tall. Yeah, I think it's really tall. Yeah. Did you want me to look at that, or are you guys just noting? I think we're just noting. Just noting. Raj. Secondary branching, pate pate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> when I have kids, I'll be like, you want to go take a bathy pate? <laughs> 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 Somehow on our shift, uh, it became the great bathy pathies in the sky. <laughs> like when we were like Googling something. That I, sounds yeah, very I, Pink Floyd. I know, doesn't it? I'm not really <laughs> sure how we got to that point. I couldn't retrace our steps at all. But Keep going. I thought you were happen. going to needles. We've been, calling the, another move, step, step. we've been calling the Balasoma bees uh, cheese moons. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. look at the big cheese moon. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Person when the moon the hits your eye, like what? a giant, what do you call it? Big moon pizza pie? Yeah. <laughs> moon big cheese pie. Moon cheese pie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Moon cheese pie. <laughs> the person in the audience said, said that they were inspired to, uh, I think, paint a picture of those yellow bowls home. And oh, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Maybe really share a few. That. A few uh, artists uh, have what mentioned they were going to. Yeah. gray. So purple? to share it with us, they were supposed to post it and hashtag Nautilus Live. Is that right? Yeah. 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 You remember the first one we saw? It really did look like the man in the moon from the angle that we came at it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was so cool. I love it. We're so lucky. We, we are. are. Yeah. For real. It's pretty surreal. Yeah. 
I always have this feeling, you know, like I can't take my eyes off the screen because we're just going to see the next thing. Yeah. And the next thing. <laughs> and then the next thing. <laughs> Even so off great. the screen, you sleep in one morning and you I miss a whale shark. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah, how many of us on cold to four miss the whale shark? I missed I it. I, missed <laughs> it. <laughs> I know I, I saw a picture of it, um, of the fin coming out of the water from um, one of the ROV peeps, and I, my brain couldn't even. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was something else. <laughs> <laughs> like as soon as I cracked my eyes open, I checked my phone. I was like, "What?" And like, "Good gracious." Yep. Yeah. Yep. I know. Well, it's we did get the Dumbo squid, so we can't complain yeah. too much. Yeah. We did. Seriously. <laughs> they were trying to say that the Dumbo squid was. Or sorry, Dumbo. I, yeah, so I just followed I your mistake. Why do I keep calling it squid? I'm I don't. Sorry, maybe guys. you're trying to call up a squid interview that would be cool um trying to manifest a squid <laughs> do you, i was under the impression that the uh, dumbo octopus was kind of large um but i guess it got around a little that like it was little really and i was like no uh -uh. i felt like i was being gaslit i was like it was big <laughs> it's pretty big i thought it was pretty big it was bigger than the lasers wasn't it yeah it was bigger than the lasers and that was in like the across direction right and then like in the up and down direction i feel like it was i feel like it was two 20 centimeters across and maybe 40 centimeters tall yeah. with all of its arms tucked in so yeah, just that's just mantle it's pretty close to what i was recalling so okay all right think, i'm cl but that's kind of like that's kind of like our threshold right is it bigger or smaller than the lasers right <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah I'm totally <laughs> i'm thinking like medium-sized dog Medium-sized dog. Or yeah. Smaller than a medium-sized dog, I think. Maybe like a larger than a small dog. Well, not in mass, <laughs> but in, yeah, yeah. How like many lower chihuahuas? Size. How many chihuahuas is the octopus? <laughs> <laughs> Two New to three, measurement. depending on the arms. Can I just point out the vast Thanks, number Diane. of barnacles that we're looking at right now? This is like a no joke. It is a neural, sea of barnacles. It's a neural network. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody said it. We saw some big Chrysa Chrysa gorges for a minute. Oh. Oh, Lila. You're hot. Thank you. Sorry about that. We are back in order back here. You wanna do a partial zoom on the sea back, of particles again? Thank, thank you, thank you. Here. Is it more impressive zoomed in or zoomed out, do you guys think, these barnacle seas? How do you even determine that? I don't know. <laughs> I think out. Out? Oh, okay. The flow is more like artistic out, I would say, but yeah. it's Let's cool to see to the individual wide. organisms a little bit. Yeah. Go ahead and come wide. So Asaka says we have been seeing these barnacles for two hours and 40 minutes, and they started around uh, yes, 2,221 meters step. So we've been seeing a lot of barnacles. I think this is a barnacle dive. So we've had coral dives, we've had sponge dives, we've had volcanic plumbing and amazing coral dives and giant sponge dives all in one. And now this is a barnacle dive. Yeah. <laughs> it goes barnacles. to show you just how incredible these dives are that we didn't mention the octopus dive. We didn't mention the chimera <laughs> dive. Yeah. <laughs> or the dead lights, uh, as I fought a poor dive. <laughs> There's just so many dives and they all have their own distinctive personality. Yeah. I know sometimes <laughs> on the on the duller ones we're like, man, we only saw one incredible otherworldly thing today. <laughs> or yeah. we only saw this giant field of nodules for an hour. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we did we earned it. We earned that one that day, didn't we? <laughs> well, we were trying to navigate west to deal with the current, to be fair. Yeah. I mean the w what we saw afterwards, we earned going through that nodule field. True. I just thought it was funny that it let up like 15 What's minutes up? after shift change. Oh, seriously, it totally did. There's a spot where there's like no barnacles. I think that's uh, in the lee side of the current there, so yeah. it's not going to be as favorable for for them to feed. To the lower right there? Yeah, and, uh, and to the left too. That just went off screen. Huh, that's a good observation, yeah. Rocks are pretty polished. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely still some current here. Sorry, what was that, Bill? Definitely still some current here for seeing uh, that polishing. 
Oh yeah, definitely. And we're seeing uh, still those sure. barnacles favoring those more uh, vertical faces. Is it barnacle or is it volcano? An eruption of barnacles, perhaps. Right. <laughs> oh, that's, I like the intersection. Yep. <laughs> uh -huh. Every barnacle is like its own little volcano. <laughs> oh. oh, we're going micro and macro. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hungry little volcano. <laughs> Volcanoes at different scales. Wow, that boulder looks like it's ready to <laughs> drop. Kind of yeah, does, doesn't sure. it? Could oh, be yeah. so check. precarious. Roger. Although it looks like it's fairly attached at the top. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, some a couple of cup corals. I haven't seen those really? in a while. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, right. right by the lasers, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice spot. There's and an anemone. An anemone. That's a big one. Yeah. I love the textures here. Yeah, this isn't the same botryoidal texture that we're seeing on the manganese crusts as we've seen on a lot of other dives. Yeah, it's looks much like more we're smoothed over. Coming up into in this little valley of rock, there's a few things. Maybe yeah. just a couple sponges. Looks like a little refuge. Somebody was suggesting we send down a UV light to see the fluorescence on the things down here. Yeah, wasn't I was somebody was telling us that there was a dive that was more focused on Crazy, this is now? Yeah, they bring out a low light camera sometimes, right? Another more I think Kylie? I think Sorry? that has was a few years ago um, with Brennan Phillips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did they find like a lot of bioluminescence? That underside maybe Maybe I'm wrong, but it was, oh, that could be from the barnacles. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. Sorry. I thought it was more of like that heavily altered style of rock that Oh, more the hyaloclastite? Yeah, uh, the hyaloclastite. Maybe. Oh, it looks a little yellowy, actually. Yeah, we might be we might be in another near vent situation if that's the case. Good. Nice spot on that. I was focusing on getting a that's sip of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a UHS kind of process. Yeah. Yeah, it does. That does look a little bit that way. So maybe we're near an old, uh, an old fissure or something. Go ahead and come full way, please. <laughs> I like how that anemone set up shop right at the top. Oh yeah. Eh, get a better view there. Oh, of and the there void. We're back. we're back to our the abyss. Mini forest. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're seeing more Can I people look at the dive plan when you have a second, Val? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. I think waypoint four is kind of our, the big thing we're headed uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's then only six in this dive. Yeah, this is one of the steeper sections of this dive. I mean, yeah, yeah, we've been seeing a difference in the uh, uh, population density of the corals here. They like the slope. It is sufficiently slopey for them. The corals? Yeah. What's okay. interesting is they're established on semi-loose substrate there right. compared to what Good we point. were at. Quite tall, too. So they're, they're pretty happy here. Um, Chris was saying that you don't always see uh, uh, some of the larger corals on uh, these more rubbly surfaces. This could also be more in place. This looks like more of the hyaloclastite uh, acting as a substrate here. Mm. If I'm reading the rocks correctly. Huh. If you're just joining us, we're in it's our okay, sixth hour of a projected 16 hour dive on the Argonaut Seamount. We pan right oh, a little nice bit. Fan there. Large primnoid. Do, do you notice all the old uh, attachment points? It looks yeah. like there yeah. maybe was yeah. a lot more density here at one point.
it, yeah, looks like we still have that uh, uh, east to west current too, looking at the alignment of the fans. Yeah, that's a, so that's, that's been pretty one. steady. East to what? Where was the current coming from? Uh, east to west. So we're looking at the uh, alignment of the fans here. Go ahead and push it in there, partial, please. That should be good. A little shrimpy in there. Oh yeah, sure enough. The squatty, Getting squatty, scrampy. That should be good there. Look at that view. And hardly any barnacles on this rock. All of a sudden. Yeah, that is interesting. Huh. Good, good observation. That's a good point. Yeah, and then you got this uh, kind of two-tier thing going on with the Chrysogorgia on the vertical faces of the rock, and then you have the big fans on top. Lila Sako is suggesting a ID. Oh, Paracalyptrophora. Yeah, looks like that. Away, please. Yep, yes, please. Asako, how do you tell between Paracalyptrophora and Calyptrophora? I'm really not good at telling those apart. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. How wide is that one? That is really Oh, my dense. God. Look at the oh angle gosh. on all those. Look at how tall they are. This is like out of Dr. Seuss. <laughs> uh-huh. It's a whole other planet down here. That is amazing. You know, I've said this before, but... Like, can you believe we share a planet with all of no. this? No. <laughs> and there's one tiny bat the path. Is this a forest or a garden? Coral. Let's see. It's she said if it's one species, it's a forest. I feel like it's like a chrysogorgian forest with yeah. other things. <laughs> with, with a few visitors. <laughs> with, with some gardens adjacent. <laughs> it reminds me of D.C. in the spring. Yeah, with the cherry Aww, trees. Yeah. yeah. We have a little black coral right in there. Oh, yeah. Along with all this Chrysogorgia. <laughs> Sako is so happy. Did you see this? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, we're fo if we're following your uh, criteria, Sako, I, I guess we should call this a garden. Multi-species, <laughs> right? So cool. I think that's really one of Sako's <laughs> favorite phrases is coral garden. Wow. Okay, well, we can get a cool shot looking back. A little bit sitting down a little bit. Wow. Are they even taller in the back there? I think, I think it's so. the rise a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I, it's a little hard to get the perspective sometimes. Man. And those actually, Hemicrali really add a cool element down there. So. I think I think they actually, some of them might be taller because it does look like the slope goes down behind this feature. Okay. From Atalanta, you see, you kind of see that? If you can combine the view from Herc and the, the shadows from Atalanta. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. I'll take God, your word for it. Oh. I have a hard time with <laughs> the perception. Yeah. Me yeah. too. It's hard. It's All cool right. from Atalanta. That is so dramatic. Yeah. Can I thruster wash everything. Sorry. Right. No, we, we have a, a whip in the back. Yeah. It's the first whip we've seen in a while. We had a question about the. Uh, rocks you were calling the heliclastites. Um, what made you think that that was the kind of rock you were looking at? Um, I was seeing uh, some evidence that um, where the crust was a little bit thinner, that uh, it was a lighter colored rock. And uh, a lot of the heliclastites that we've sampled on previous dives, a uh, uh, number of them have been this kind of uh, really pale brown or like a pale yellow in color. And um, you can see kind of a uh, brecciated, kind of knobbly texture to them that the basalts uh, uh, haven't had. So um, tentative field ID just from the video is uh, that we might be looking at a volcanic clastic breccia, aka hyaloclastite. 
we've we've seen that in one or two other spots um, a cool along shot. this dive. So it seems to be. Thank uh, you. It seems to be one of the deposits that we're uh, we're seeing here and there. We're also we're also going up a rift axis, so it's it's um, highly probable that we are uh, crossing some uh, uh, some old uh, volcanic fit, uh, fissures where you would have had eruption of that kind of material. On call for another one. Sure thing. Thank you. Bridge, this is Nab. Another move, same step, please. Looks like we're following up a really long crack mm -hmm. in the rock right here in the middle. Right, would you mind opening the iris a little bit on her? Thank you. Wow. Just keeps yeah. going. Look at all the attachment points there. Yeah. Yeah, right. There used to be a whole lot of something. Yeah. Or maybe it's all like at a different times. spot would be my guess. It's so dense here. Um, oh, wow, a huge maybe. fan coming. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, several fans, actually. Yeah, double up. Yeah. Do they grow together? I think so. Looks like they're at least crossing branches. Hmm. Branches. Got a lot of uh, associates. Lots of anemones. Uh, yeah, I think that is it. Look at yeah, how can we long. Get a zoom on that, please. That. Sorry, a zoom on what? Uh, this this large. Uh, sorry. Uh, fan coral. Yeah. Uh, sure intergrowth here. Yeah. That was a good call from afar, I think. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's good. Cup coral. Oh come a little wide. Yeah, yeah it's they? not brittle stars. No. It's Are they cup corals? Anemones. Anemones. Anemone. Yeah, we're so used to seeing uh, brittle stars as associates. On these that is Can cool. we do lasers off quick? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Look at the structure of the one on the left, the branching. These are some really beautiful of the like large bottle brush shaped chrysogorgia, but they like I've never noticed quite the spirally stems until they were this big. Mm -hmm. Alright, you can push on a little bit more if you'd like. I think that's Ooh. Oh. Hello. Bye, bud. Somehow it knew. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, we must. They look like a part of the coral, you know, the way they've woven they themselves in there. Yeah. yeah. And the coloration, yeah. too. Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, wow. Can I come partial white, please? They're little flower buds Thank on you. the hemichorallium. Right. All right, full white, please. Very cool colony. Yeah. Very cool. A lot more whips suddenly. Right. Yeah. I'll get ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little behind now. Very cool spot. Absolutely. There's a sponge, maybe, up in the upper left. Haven't been seeing many of those. Oh, yeah. It looks like there's one ahead, too. Nice shot. Kylie's on it with Atalanta framing <laughs> shots right now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah. Looks yeah. Minimal. Whoa. That's a good Look at those big drama fans. shot right there. Oh. Those are huge. <laughs> <laughs> huge, I tell you. <laughs> wow. What's going on with this one here? Did something eat it? Oh, yeah. It looks or maybe stunted broken. or something. Yeah. I think 8 to 12 had a uh, couple of spots that were really fan heavy too, from what I was seeing in the chat earlier. Looks like more anemones in these hemichorallids. Yeah, I wonder why it's the next few moves uh, hmm? uh, north, zero, zero, zero. Sorry? The next moves will be zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 Raj. Yes. Go ahead and do a, like a partial zoom there. We'll get this other fan. Let's get there. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little wide. curious why the associates That's are different there. here. Ooh. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. 
We have seen so them cool. in the past, but they definitely don't seem to be as common as we're seeing them here. Come to think of it, are you on porch on? This is, fan right yeah. here is just incredible. Yeah. Oh, no, it's enormous. Why is it so different, Leela? Gotcha. Are the polyps just more open and out? Is it because we're uh, deeper? Oh, nice. That's cool. I don't think I've seen any brittle stars so far this dive. Oh, oh this dive, yeah. Uh, yeah, please. I don't think I have either. Mm. Wow. Well, good point. Yeah, you go ahead and secure the They're usually all over the place. Okay, porch coming back off. Thank I you. don't think we've seen Basers basket back stars off. either. No. Right. No. We are still pretty deep, aren't we? Yeah, we're at uh, 21.14. You think we'll be fine with uh, 50 meters? Uh, yeah, I think so. Do we contour. I have different lights on Herc right now, like a brighter brow light of some kind than no. usual? No. Okay. Weird. This is now. Porch is off, um, and the regular lights are on. Uh, next move so north. strange. Everything is... Uh, 50 I like meters. turned everything exposure way down, and it's still blown out. Yes, please. Yeah, it's the same it has been. I think it's lighter colored substrate today, or at least right now. Yeah, I know it's the corals. Like, usually the hemichromium don't get blown out. I need to, oh, okay. I need to adjust. Interesting. We have a question. Uh, why isn't there a second manipulator arm equipped with a camera for more reach and zoom? This is just the way Herc was designed, um, and we do not have additional camera channels at this point. Um, so, like, there's there's a lot of different ways to configure an ROV. It just depends on your wants and your needs um, uh, for your operations, and, and this is the configuration that the Nautilus uses. And also, um, having it on an arm wouldn't necessarily increase the range that we can zoom to by that much, because that's more a product of uh, relative lens sizes than it is of... Um, where the camera is actually positioned. Oh, um. And I imagine it'd be a little harder to protect the camera if it's being put out yeah. beyond her. Did you want to do an eDNA here? Or do we want to reserve Ooh. that? Yeah, let's do that. Speaking of arms. Sorry, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just Great like, call. kind what? of very slowly, just like we were along uh, the uh, plumbing system, just kind of going, oh, derp, we need to do X or <laughs> <Yes>. Y. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad you keep that in mind because I was so just blown away. I know, I've away. been bad yeah. at that recently. I'm just like focusing on all the other things. Yeah. Um, yeah, if we want to do a flyby DNA here, it'd be cool. Yeah, we've got some pretty good diversity here. I'm seeing anemones, sponges, a couple different kinds of corals, at least three different kinds of corals. We could uh, go for number two. Number and those, two. those associate anemones too. Mm hmm. So this is pretty different from uh, some of the other communities that we've uh, uh, done the eDNA over. Are you full wide there, Rhett? I think so. I'll check. Yeah. See, I'm occasionally useful right as back. a lead scientist. We're still yeah. racking. You are always you useful. Do great. <laughs> should be full. I mean, I'm still racking. Can't tell. It's not moving, but not I feel like you should well. ha have more. Exactly. Well, Actually, I just tilt down. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I don't have any more in. Mm. It just feels like it should be further back, back I think. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to halt right there. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. there is one sponge up ahead of us once we get moving again. Oh, Ooh. look at that big stock in the back. Yeah, yeah. we'll take All a right, look at that I one. Got got eyes. Um, the prize. Raj Raj. I am four meters off, Leela, so she'll me to get me. Well, it's from the back, so I'll come a little closer, but sweet. Thanks. Okay. Say when. All right. Get it. Get, 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 get it. Oops, I got both. Which ones? I, not, nothing yet. Oh, Sorry, okay. I had my fingers on two lanyards. Yep. Oh, Wait. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Give it back. Raj. Okay. Got it. Nice. Cool beat. Nice. 
Maybe this is that long stalked sponge that we. I, it looks like it, and it almost looks like there's something at the end of it, but there I can't is. I tell. I it's just like another fan. I saw a head. I thought. Yeah. When we were on a little bit different. That'd be cool. Actually. I can see why they crack off the. Is that okay? Further out. Yeah, a little further out, please. Like that way. Yeah, Raj. Awesome. Nice job. Okay, draft time for next dive is currently 8 a.m. tomorrow, to answer your question from earlier. Good answer. <laughs> Glad to provide a favorable answer for you. So we're going to get a little more sleep, but a little less fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we do need to sleep now and again. Is that a green thing? That doesn't look like the right shape for a green no. thing. No. <laughs> it's like an old sponge. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. i got to bring the green thing up like <laughs> once, once a watch. <laughs> not, not for nothing, but I've been thinking about the ones that like are green adjacent. And I was like, yes, yes, I will study the green things. I will identify them. And then I will have a prodigy that studies the almost but not green ones. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jess, Jess, are we able to go check out that uh, sponge? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Where about that? Um, where was it? Oh, there we <laughs> look on the uh, Atalanta view. It's in the upper left. Wow, look at that. Oh, upper yep. Upper left? Yeah, I think it's de due north of uh, Atalanta, like straight north of Atalanta, I think. Yeah, oh, no, like that's not a sponge. Down here. I don't know. You're turning in the correct direction. Oh, you yeah, there it, it is. Atlanta? Yeah, Whoa. it's far left. It almost does look like there's Oh, it is. Sorry, it's uh, almost, yeah, almost, there, keep going. You got it. Look at that landscape. There oh, we go. Oh, my Whoa. God. Whoa. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. I missed it I on the way the here. We, we found, found the sponge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that it's a big colophagus. That looks like a good candidate for all those stocks, right? Oh, I think yeah. so. That's yeah, the biggest totally. colophagus I ever seen. Wow. Man, where's Chris when you need him? He's, walk he He's walking. walking his puppy. He's walking his puppy. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Do we have it on? I no, we don't. We get if it's off, I think. Puppy time is very important, yeah. so. I think you've been, I will not be grudging that ever. Okay. You've been sitting here for four hours. Thing. Sure. Look at that. That's lasers cool. off. I don't think we've Thank seen you. one of these before. The morphology looks totally different. Yeah, wow. it's a colophagus, but we haven't seen any that's quite this like uh, wavy on the on the convex side. Yeah, Good. exactly. Nice so partial. Let's get there. Yeah, I was kind of noting the wow, same thing. Like I would have expected that, like on the inside of, uh, like the face of it, if you will. It's got... It's almost like it's inverted. Right. Gotta Man. come down there a little on the delta piece. The webbing on the inside on this side is gorgeous. It is. Wow. It looks like a cloud. It kind of does. Oh, that's nice with the prim, uh, primoids behind it. I don't think our watch ever gets this quiet. I know, we're just all <laughs> awestruck. Yeah. This Great. part looks like a gecko face. <laughs> <laughs> You're at the end of the tether. Roger. You, you get the ones that live inside your house and chirp up at weird hours. Yeah. yeah. That's I had a there. couple of those. Uh -huh. I'm wow, at the end of my tether, it's so, so I can't get too yeah, far it is. around there, but very cool. That is so cool. Still can, please be getting good stuff. Mm. Oh yeah, still can oh, get yeah. some good stuff on it. Pretty nice. So how long, anybody Full have an please. estimate on the stock way? Massive. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get ahead of you, Raj. We'll do a similar move, 50 meters to north. Roger. Uh, Thanks. Stand by one sec. Okay, Thanks for that. Yeah, sure thing. Now yeah, we know what the stocks are Crazy, now. this is not. That's cool. That yes. is so cool. Another 50 meters to north. Mystery 
likely solved. I think so. And we know that it wasn't just like there were a bunch of these way far in the past and now there are none. Hmm. There must be some living ones around. Yeah. I mean, there are, obviously. There's a sea star of some sort. Oh, no, that's an, an enemy. enemy. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> this is such a cool community. Yeah. It is. So dense. Great call on the eDNA. Yeah. Yeah, I'd almost forgotten about that. Like, oh, yeah, we got to do science. We're not just uh, sightseeing here. <laughs> We're not just sightseeing. <laughs> we could do a lot of sightseeing, though. I'm not going to object to that. If you're just joining us, we are working our way up the southern ridge of the Argonaut Seamount in the East Fork of the Leleokalani Black World Ridge. Oop, um, the non-branch. Okay, yeah. We started at a yeah. depth of 2,300 meters. We're about 2,100 meters now. One of our assignments uh, from the onshore science team is to keep eyes peeled for a, uh, uh, what was it, multi-branching uh, yeah. bathopathies. Are multi, multi-branching bathopathies? Wow, look how dense this is right here. Like uh -huh. the one, in, there's one on the wish list. It's hard though, because when they're multi-branching, they're usually lilopathies or, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> leave them on <laughs> the wish list. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> Who did that? Did you do that? Uh, this was a bit of me being a little overtired last night. Oh me my god, Diane you guys. Scheming. Has anyone else seen this? <laughs> no. In the Kelly wish list, there's an added stapled page that looks exactly the same. It just has a picture of the green thing. <laughs> and it's Leela Malucci's wish list. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Though. Yeah, that, that was... The product You've been waiting. How long have you been waiting? <laughs> Since about 10 o'clock last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. This one, that multi-branching bathopathies, yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, man. <laughs> so, Val, we had a question about whether or not... Uh, we would expect to find any hydrothermal vents in this area? Um, that is a very good question. Uh, so we think this volcano has probably been uh, extinct for a long time, probably since uh, the Cretaceous, maybe around 70, 80-ish million years ago, maybe a little more. Um, if we do find any evidence of an old hydrothermal deposit, uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty inactive. I'm also not sure how long um, old extinct hydrothermal vents, like specifically the vent structures themselves, stick around. Uh, I've only ever seen hydrothermal vents uh, and the remnants on volcanoes that um, are still active or uh, recently active. So, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, I think the closest we've gotten so far have been the hyaloclastite deposits, since those are probably proximal to eruptive vents. I am on the lookout for them, though, just just in case. <laughs> Still seeing a lot of anemones in the coral, but we did, I just circled on the tele, what do you call it, telescript? Telestrator. A couple squat lobsters. They look small, though. One of our viewers just pointed out that the direction of the fans has changed. Yeah, um, I was about to ask, and then <laughs> we had a little giggle moment. Um, because, yeah, that, that it is a good time to check in on the um, uh, what Drift. the current's doing. Yeah, because yeah. I noticed we were heading just about north, and it looked like, yeah, the, maybe the current had tilted slightly south. Yeah, okay, so I'm off the stick. We can see the, the um, marine snow is a little bit towards us, so, yeah, I think it has shifted directions. It's not very strong right now, though. So. Okay. It's probably coming from the north, I would imagine, but oh, wow. it's pretty, pretty... Uh, Steady? Yeah. Steady-ish. Not very, not very current. That's a big change if it's coming out of uh, the north now. Yeah. I thought it kind of had gone from, like, coming out of the east to maybe coming out of the south looking at the fans, but now I see the way that they're curved. Yeah, it's got to be coming out of the north. Let's, let's see. Um, so I'm off the stick. 
off. We're going to be off stick. We're going to take a lot of heading. Hey, Lila, what are the name of these vase-like sponges again? Are those Rosellidae? I think so, yeah. Rosellid and Rosellid. Bathydorus is what some of those Rosellid. vases are. But I don't know about that one. That is really slow. Yeah, Val, I'm not, I don't have a really good sense of, I think it's coming from the north, but okay. um, it's not pushing us at all. Okay. Thanks for the check on that. Yeah, sure. One of our viewers in Italy would like to know what we look for in collecting specimens. Um, I can talk about the biological specimen specimens. Here we are looking for um, for corals or sponges or invertebrates um, that have not yet been collected at all or that have not been collected within the Papahanaumokuakea Camry National Monument. Um, and those will serve sort of as voucher, spe voucher specimen uh, specimens or, or the first one that has been collected for people to reference back to uh, morphologically. And we also take little snips for genetic analysis. Um, and we're kind of looking at how many are in the area before sampling. Um, if there are no more than 10, if there are less than 10, we can only take one of them, although we've only been taking one in general. Um, yeah, that's what we're looking at for bio. Val, you want to talk about geo? Um, yeah, I'm actually thinking about Rocks. Maybe a rock sample. <laughs> We're gonna We're get a rock. We're coming up on waypoint four, and we are seeing uh, some tallest. So. Oh uh, look, it was coming up in the yeah, Atlanta. We'll, yeah, we'll plan on. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can anybody get a uh, shot of that Atlanta yeah. view? Got it. That is, that is awesome. so That's cool. A cool shot. Yeah, we'll we'll look for a place here shortly to uh, put down and uh, see if we can get us a piece of pillow basalt. So yeah, what we're looking for geologically here is uh, we don't know where uh, the volcanoes comprising the uh, Liliokalani uh, chain are coming from. So um, there are a couple of ideas. Uh, one uh, one idea that's been around for a while is that these might have been part of an old spreading ridge, but uh, the evidence is pretty weak for that as far as we can tell. Uh, the other uh, hy hypothesized origin is that these came from a uh, mantle plume that stays relatively fixed in Earth's mantle as uh, the Pacific plate moves uh, over it, which leaves you an age progressive trail of um, uh, volcanoes. And uh, we think that if it's uh, option B there, a plume origin, that these uh, volcanoes were likely active between about 75 to 100 million years ago along this chain. And uh, to determine that, we can um, uh, use a combination of argon-argon uh, age determinations uh, from uh, some of these rocks, as well as uh, uh, CO3, reg. their uh, chemistry and um, what some yes, of their uh, uh, radiogenic isotopes uh, look like. And we can trace that to what kind of uh, mantle these, uh, these melts came from and assign an origin to them that way. We might even be able to track them to one of the uh, one of the uh, active volcanoes out in the southeastern Pacific, if uh, if uh, it is still indeed uh, active. And yeah, we we have a couple of uh, potential candidates for a uh, for a plume uh, that links back to these. That's uh, uh, currently uh, making some new volcanoes uh, southeast of us. So we're, we're interested in uh, some of the, uh, you know, with that new information, some of the uh, history of the Pacific Mantle and some of its dynamics and uh, learning a little bit more about the uh, how the interior of a living planet works. The, uh, the Cretaceous was a pretty busy time uh, tectonically and volcanically and uh, we're, always, we're always trying to learn more about that because it's it was a very different time than the conditions that we live in now. So yeah, we pick up a few rocks each dive. Um, and uh, I cut those open using a rock saw that we have uh, on board the ship. And uh, I make
make a huge mess, and then I clean it up when I'm done. And uh, based on uh, what those rocks look like when they're cut open, I can do some basic uh, uh, field observations and some initial characterizations on most of them and uh, get, a, get a feel for what's uh, going to really help us um, you know, uh, learn more about where these rocks came from and send them off to uh, uh, some labs where we're going to do uh, pretty intensive chemical and isotopic and uh, uh, analyses and uh, age determinations. Um, and then we have uh, Beth Orcutt, who is our uh, chief scientist on this expedition, and she's interested in the microbial populations that uh, grow in these rocks too. So we collect uh, uh, usually about two rocks her dive for her, uh, along with a water sample that um, lets us get an idea of the microbiome, both in the rocks and in the water column, so we can understand, uh, uh, you know, what what um, kind of microbiological processes and populations are here on these seamounts. Some more sponges up here. Yeah, kind of an interesting mix. Uh, Hemichorallium seems to be dominating now. Well, I've seen some Chrysogorgia thick in the background at times. And some very yeah, much. it seems like along that one ridge, it's like all Hemichorallium fans. Below it, there are these primnoids, and above it are the are the Chrysogorgids. We've seen a few different sponge morphologies too. Yeah. Just an interesting tiered community. Mm -hmm. Oh, and what's on the left of Herc? Atlanta. Oh, is that like a wall of yeah, uh, fans we're coming up on? Wall of fans. Looks like it. Oh, did you see? We might be. Are we in some kind of a little channel right I now? I know. It looks I like we're, we are. there's an overhang or something above us. Yeah, it makes me not want to look for a sample right here. Uh, so I always worry about um, how the, you know, the local shape of things. It's channelizing flow. You know, we just don't want that prop wash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not in a huge hurry for a rock right now, but at some point soon we'll we'll find a nice place. Hey, Reg. We'll get ourselves a nice rock. Well, there's a question about how hot spots make these north-south directed ridges. Okay. Um, so uh, we. So we presume that these are uh, Cretaceous in age because there is uh, an old, uh, there, there is an age determination that was done a couple decades ago using an older, uh, older dating method that uh, places uh, one of these seamounts uh, in the Cretaceous. Um, and uh, at that point in Earth history, the Pacific plate was moving approximately uh, north-northwest in its plate motion vector, and uh, uh, there were a number of hot spots, and still are, uh, active at that time, and uh, they all produced these parallel sort of north-northwest uh, uh, trending uh, chains of basalt, so they get to um, basically, or basalt, uh, seamounts. So you get these uh, track, uh, these seamounts that get um, older and older and older uh, as you go to the, the northwest in this uh, particular time window. And uh, the reason that happens is because uh, you have um, a source of uh, basically a thermal chemical anomaly in the mantle, a mantle plume, um, that is relatively fixed in the mantle. And then you have uh, uh, the Pacific uh, plate, which is moving over that. So um, it's uh, the motion of the motion and the, uh, uh, the speed of the overlying uh, tectonic plate that helps uh, determine the, uh, the orientation of um, the seamount chain that's produced as the uh, as the plume in the mantle melts and, uh, and uh, sort of uh, and, and then those melts that uh, and, uh, they end up moving up into the crust, erupt out a little seamount, and then eventually um, ev eventually these seamounts uh, kind of lose contact. They move far further away from the uh, melt supply generated by the plume and. Uh, move off of that, become inactive, and all the while 
there's new uh, uh, melt conduit that forms in the crust and that forms uh, a new seamount. Eventually that moves off the, the hot spot, and, you know, rinse and repeat, and uh, you, get a, you get a chain generated uh, that way. One of the other interesting things about uh, the seamount chain is that uh, Lilio Kalani appears to uh, split into a west and an east fork. So we've been spending a lot of time in previous dives on the uh, 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 first above the junction, uh, where we kind of had to uh, move to in order to escape some weather um, down here uh, where we are now. And then uh, we moved down and spent a lot of time on the Crab uh, right here on the eastern port, or excuse me, the uh, western portion of the uh, oh seamount yeah. chain. And now we're looking on the, uh, uh, the eastern on fork. Yeah, let's zoom on that real quick, if we, if we can. Yeah, sure thing. Cool, thank you. Um, we're interested to see whether or not there is something with the uh, mantle plume that uh, caused its melting zone to kind of uh, divide can push on him, please. and split into two melt zones for a while, which uh, we've seen in some other hotspot tracks. Um, or if we're looking at um, two forks of a chain that just happen to be in a similar place and were formed by two different uh, uh, processes. So the way that we'll be able to tell that um, pretty rapidly is uh, if the two sides of the Lilio Kalani chain are the same age, um, that's pretty much oh, uh, that's that pretty much seals the deal that it had to have come from the uh, the same source. Thank you. Two yeah. different ages. Um, yeah, then we may have had two different things going on. I think that was some kind of king crab, Alitha did, but let's look more. <laughs> kind of like that one there. Like the Paralomus a little. Mention. Yeah. I thought crabs had four pair of walking legs. It was mm. a pretty large crab for how deep down we are, right? Or just not something um, no, we see there are much. lots of deep sea crabs that are are that size. Okay. Um, I don't know, like on at methane seeps, we see all kinds of king crabs that oh, really? large yeah. and larger than that even. Wow. But um, yeah, we haven't been seeing a lot here for some reason. Is it like warmer at methane seeps? Um, no, methane seeps we call them cold seeps because they're okay. usually uh about ambient temperature maybe like a, you know sometimes there are anomalous ones that are a few degrees warmer okay um but we've also saw these uh justin i think in our first cruise here more often i remember first learning names like paralomus here i don't remember it as well but i'll take your word for it <laughs> we have these occasional black corals popping up pretty consistently here yep. yeah but i haven't yeah. seen Those any of that branching died. just i think the stand the bathopathies hey val so um what's your understanding of why the, uh, for example, the Hawaiian archipelago, why that dog leg occurred, why the plate seems to have changed direction, or why, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but. Towards the emperors? Yeah, well, there's that dog leg where oh, you shift the, the Hawaiian range. Yeah, the bend. Ah, yes, I've heard different, I've heard different hypotheses. I'm curious what your under, your thoughts are. Okay, so uh, commonly we associate uh, these bends or these elbows in uh, hotspot tracks as uh, places where uh, there was some sort of reorganization of the uh, tectonic plates that caused uh, a shift in the plate motion vector for the Pacific plate. And um, uh, if, if uh, a number of our viewers are probably familiar with um, how the Hawaiian, uh, the Hawaii emperor uh, uh, chain has that, that huge change in direction. So that, that bend or that elbow occurs at about um, 50 million years ago, 50 to 47, uh, as we continue to improve our age constraints on that uh, corner there. Um, for a long time, it was thought that that was purely controlled by a change in plate motion. So um, the older uh, emperor segment of uh, the Hawaiian chain went uh, 
meant that the plate was traveling to the north northwest and then after that change it was traveling more uh, westerly so like west northwest it's a forest Sorry. it really is yeah, yeah. it's okay yeah. it's another amazing one also i'll get you out in front there kylie then i'll switch over so I'll get um, you out in front here there uh, there was uh, an IODP, so an uh, International Ocean Discovery Program, um, just like uh, uh, the, the drill ship program uh, that uh, takes core mm. samples out of um, oceanic crust and various uh, uh, deep sea features uh, done by the uh, uh, Joides Resolution Ship. Um, they did some drilling into the seamount, into some of the uh, Emperor seamounts, and some of those cores were used to get um, some paleomagnetic data that gave us uh, an idea of what um, uh, what those latitudes looked like back in time for when they uh, went while the uh, seamounts were active, you know, while they were sitting over the uh, Hawaiian hotspot, and uh, it's it was found that uh, there is actually some variation in the paleo latitudes recorded by magnetic minerals in those rocks that showed that um, the Hawaiian hotspot was actually uh, drifting, I believe, southward. Um, over time, and that may, and uh, some sudden changes in motion um, around the time that that bend formed in the uh, Hawaiian Emperor chain uh, have been linked to uh, drift in uh, the hotspots. So that's why I always say that um, you know these these hotspots remain more or less fixed in the mantle. We we do have some evidence that they drift around a little bit, and uh, Hawaii is a very good example of that. Um, we don't necessarily know why they drift. That's that's something I'm interested in uh, uh, doing some research on uh, as I continue to work on uh, various plumes around the Pacific. But um, <clears throat> it looks like it did, you know, did Dang. sprout legs and wander around a little bit. And uh, there has been um, some of its geometry appears to have been uh, controlled and like accentuated by uh, uh, this drift. So the Hawaiian bend may actually be uh, a much sharper compared to uh, other long-lived hotspots that we've been tracking over the years. Um, so uh, there, there's some some researchers who work on this stuff that believe that um, the, the 50 million year bend in Hawaii may actually be entirely due to motion of the Hawaiian hotspot in the mantle. Mm. Um, I've been working on uh, one of the hotspots, uh, one of the hotspots that yeah. I worked on for my dissertation um, is much further south in the Pacific, and uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, we'll get the pilots a minute. Okay, they're they're talking about something. I think off SPL. Um, I think that should be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we uh, tracked that same uh, segment of volcanism in a different hotspot, so something around the uh, the 50 million year age. And we found that there was a little bit of a change in direction in this other hotspot track. Uh, it just has a slightly different geometry. It's a little bit shallower. Um, it's not as abrupt. And some of that could be related to, you know, geometry of a moving plate on a sphere. But some of it also appears to be that um, it, 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 the motion described in that hotspot track is not exactly the same as that in Hawaii. So it, we think, you know, uh, the folks that I worked with on that were, were kind of inclined to think that um, the Hawaiian Emperor Bend is controlled uh, both a little bit by a uh, change in plate motion as well as uh, those changes in the, the vertical, like the latitude of the hotspot around that time. And there has been a little bit of uh, research coming out uh, in recent years that seems to support that, where uh, it looks like some researchers who specialize in uh, tectonic plates and uh, looking at plate vectors, uh, uh, plate motion through time, have... Uh, All right, pilot swap, guys. Okay, we're gonna do pilot swap. So yeah, it, it looks like they have seen um, some evidence for some uh, tectonic plate reorganizations in the uh, approximately 50 million year uh, uh, time frame that potentially could have affected Pacific plate motion. So it's a very long answer, but um, well, it's, yeah, I've read a it's it's a really interesting topic for yeah. geology folks. Thank you. I, I I heard sort of pieces of this, so it's nice to hear you sort of lay it out. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to um, evaluate all that. Um, so we're finally getting to the point where we have a couple of other different uh, long-lived hotspot tracks in the Pacific that, uh, that we know about that we've been able to trace. And that's not easy given, especially in the southern and the and 
particularly the, the Western Pacific, we have this huge density of volcanoes that are Cretaceous in age and uh, come from multiple different uh, hotspots. Uh, so um, we have to geochemically go and sort all of those out and figure out, you know, uh, you know what what volcanoes or what mantle flavor and so forth. You know, what are their ages so we can get all of uh, you know that that very dense volcanic area um, untangled, and then we can start uh, piecing together what the plate motion uh, uh, looks like according to those volcanic tracks because mm. that's that's one of the one of the many things that they record over time. And once you compare those all to each other. Um, that gives you a pretty good idea of what the uh, what the average plate motion looked like. You can also uh, compare like coeval portions of these different hotspot tracks uh, to look at how the plumes may have changed their position in in space relative to each other. So we're looking at something called inter-hotspot drift. And that's something that one of my colleagues and uh, one of our onshore science team, Kevin Conrad, did a lot of work yeah, on. Zero six, Raj. Oh. So that that gives us nice. It, it Roger. helps us semi-quantify. Um, like how much Hawaii may have drifted relative ahead, to something Matthew. like the Louisville hotspot or uh, the Rutu Arago hotspot. Zero six, zero fifty meters, right? Okay. What is this right ahead of us? Uh, look at it. There's a big hunk of rock. Big hunk of. Oh. Big <clears> hunk of. <throat> is that a dead sponge? Ooh, that is a big sponge. Uh. All right, we will pause the tectonic gabble for a moment <laughs> and uh, focus on what's going on on the screen. You, you want to send up that chocolate bar? Um, I think this one's empty. I didn't take the last piece out of that one. Someone can have it. Okay. Are you more interested in the step to the right or the stuff center screen now? Mm, what'd you like? Pick quickly. Uh, step to the center. Step to the center, Raj. Um, video zoom. You want to pass that up to Jess? Cool. Nice shot. And then on the right, that looks different. What um, is this right here? Is that an associate? Do um, oh, you, you have any more zoom? Thank you. I'll come up to it. I don't oh, know what Some that kind is. of a worm. Yeah, it does look okay. like a worm, doesn't it? Polynoid worm, probably. And then to the right, if we come could out a little. pan. That's a different sponge. Looks sort of like Lophocalyx. Hold on one second. I just, okay, video zoom. That is very delicate. Mm-hmm. I feel like we saw a bunch of that okay, hanging there. from okay. a rock I upside down. I have to down. go. Yeah, why? Another place. Very cool feature. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh. okay. Very right, cool. Now. Am I full wide? To get moving. You are. Raj. Tricky little spot, we'll get out it of there. It is tricky. Yeah. yeah. Get out of there. Up and back. Yeah, so I think it was that larger sponge. Uh, Saka says we collected a piece of that on an earlier dive. And there's a third different one in the back. I'm just yeah. going to zip over there. Sound good? Okay. Yeah. That we sounds awesome. Four. Sounds good. Yeah, this is morphologically a complicated area. We've definitely hit the dense forest again, or yeah. garden, I guess I should call it. Ah, uh, we're no, basically on waypoint four, that's why. It's from the pan tilt. Kelly, you mind if I look down? Okay. I'll get centered up on on the uh, park there. All right, so we're just uh, getting repositioned here. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Can you come wide on Atlanta also? Thank you. Sure. That'll help me a lot. I'm coming back down. Raj. So I'm starting to be in the market for no. a rock, but I will defer to the pilots on uh, site selection. So we'll go with whatever seems to be uh, pretty feasible here in the next five, 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. I'll get ahead a little bit and then, um, this is interesting it is. terrain. Yeah, um, it's interesting. So that's why I want to be mindful of uh, what's feasible. Totally. Stuff everywhere. Might be high on class tights here again too. Nice. So we're coming up on waypoint four out of six identified Some waypoints. More of that stuff. What's this about? Some wool. Thanks. Okay. About half 
halfway along our path. Okay. All my all my thrusters are on, yeah. Yeah, all the thrusters are on. If if you don't if if you don't like the Z bias, maybe you can tune that. Okay. But yeah, all thrusters are indeed <laughs> on this time. Roger. Find the place to be ahead and sit down. 